2024. The world of pop culture is crumbling into a new dark age. Disease and poverty run rampant. In a world scorched by desolation, radiation, pollution, and despair. But hey! Don't let that spoil your day. Take a vacation! Are you literally dying to go on vacation? Well, now we're here to make your dreams come true with a visit to one of many of Stark of Iron's vacation wonderland. Built by the sweat and blood of those same oppressed lower classes, Tony Stark has made his paradise die like gemstones on the petite crud of our sad little dying world. Aren't you glad you can afford it? Call now! Operators are standing by.
Hello there, and welcome to a full-length matinee show. And not just one, but two of these bad boys are going to be brought out this week as per the behest of the individuals in question who said, you know what, Tony? Murder your voice. So I will be having my uh, matinee show tonight. It will be a full-length matinee. On Thursday, I will have a matinee show that night. It'll be a full-length matinee. And if I get to 666 subscribers tonight, then the Radio Demon will have an episode of Radio 616 AM after Pop Culture Breakdown on Wednesday. So you guys voted for me to absolutely 110% murder my voice, but you know what I already said at the beginning of the week that I was going to do some overtime on YouTube, and that's what I plan to do. So let's go ahead. I'm going to adjust my volume here a little bit and go, my mic sounds nice. One, two, three, four. Welcome to New York. That's right. Bring out your dead night has moved to Tuesdays. I repeat, that's Tuesdays. And please, no dead bodies on the curb before pickup time. Dead bodies attract red Sixers. Speaking of the Sixers, we on this hour, we have some new updates coming in from other outer gang reports that have not been seen for the last few days. People are probably wondering if the city has been marketed off to a rival gang of raiders or if they are just late on their arrival. And that is your daily on the 8s out here in the nuclear wasteland. And this segment of the stream has been brought to you by the Nuka-Cola Corporation. That's right. Don't fuck with Nuka-Cola. Let's go ahead and welcome our post-apocalyptic survivors to the show. And believe me, we do have a jam-packed show. That's right. Tony has to keep himself from eating ramen for the rest of the week. So we're going to be doing some overtime. Let's welcome Susan Dolan in the chat first and foremost. Hail to you. First one in the chat right here. Then we got Canadian Spider-Man. Uh, well, let's hear Scarlet Fever. Hail to you. I see that you've noticed our emojis. Yes. And we also now have Bill Cipher emojis as well. Hail to Antiderivative Jill. Congratulations on 1,000. 1,000 subscribers. Team Bacon's. Right hand mad Rob Wright is in the house giving us some nice crispy bits of support this fine evening. Jeff Wyatt, my arch, uh, my arch investor is also in the chat. He is right now at this current juncture lurking. Well, I hope that uh, he uh, hears some Danny K and stuff later. We are having a sub drive. And with this sub drive so far, since I'd announced that we were having a sub drive, I think I picked up about, let's see, I was at. 632 and now i am at 655 so i believe if memory serves that is 22 new subscribers since the announcement of said sub drive so let's keep the gravy train rolling like this stream share it out get people in here get people listening to the radio program hail to stone racket lord of two cats i the king of seven bid you welcome Chico and Harpo have been indoctrinated into the hive. And speaking of into the hive, Susan Dolan also brings her 10,000 meowtles into the hive of my triangular headed fur babies. Yes, we are one. Hail to Bella Triggerfish in the chat. It is good to see you. Ensign Rusher says, again? Yes, again. And then I will be doing it on Thursday. And then I will be guesting on Pop Culture Breakdown in between. And if I get to 666 subscribers, bare minimum, the Radio Demon will have his subscriber drive a reward for that milestone. Uh, Ensign Rusher goes on to ask, uh, what is a sub drive? A sub drive is one of these uh, streamer, YouTuber, whatchamacallit nicknames where we just, you know, we put out incentive to obtain subscribers, at least the natural way, the organic way. Uh, we are attempting to earn our way to the top. I know some people have gotten quite comfortable in purchasing their way to the top. Uh, and if that is their prerogative, I, on the other hand, want to earn your business. And that means I'm going to be singing show tunes, doing jokes, bringing the radio demon on for some dad humor, not once, but twice, but three times this week, as I will still have the after party after Friday Night Frolics over on Overlord DVD's channel. Hail to Rod Thunderheart, it is good to see you, my good fellow. I hope that you are in great spirits today. I have nothing to drink at the house right now, but I will pretend anyway. And yes, absolutely, we will be doing Star Trekking across the universe in just a few moments. 
and I believe that we are now caught up. And thank you guys for choosing me this wonderful Tuesday evening. And I hope that I provide you a great and wonderful program tonight. I as sure as heck am going to bust my keister for you all. And you best damn well believe it. Uh, yes, yes. So yes, keep sharing that bad boy out. I, I know all, I see all, and my eyes are on you. Let's go ahead. Uh, and uh, Don Lewis, uh, yes, and uh, uh, indeed. Hello to uh, the singing cephalopod Fade, my brother in Evil Radio. Yes, yes, yes. Did you see? Uh, did you see the finished uh, prop I posted on the Tweeter Twatter? Uh, yes, I have a Radio Demon staff now in my uh, motley assortment of uh, artifacts. Uh, some Eldridge, uh, some not not so much. Uh, Don Lewis goes on to say, This is in from WWW Pro. With the losses from Disney Plus and the recent purchase of Hulu, Mickey Rat is approximately $30 billion in the hole. Well, when I was first notified, it was at around $7 billion, but I am not surprised. This is not me not surprised. Uh, go ahead, Gilbert, say it. This is my expression of not being surprised. We'll have a little more Gilbert Godfrey later on in the show as well. So let's go ahead and uh, wet my whistle. <clears throat> and we are going ahead. We're going to sing ourselves a little tune for you all. Let's start with this one. I see, I see it just uh, a bit thematic. And I have to do mostly crooner tunes tonight. If anybody sends a super chat for any particular song or a mega chat or anything in between or buys members, obviously, that, that, that I will sing whatever they want. But where I am doing two shows of this caliber, uh, three throughout the entire week, I have to save my voice. And so I need to sing in my comfort range tonight. So I apologize if I'm not going to be singing too high or too low or doing a lot of the grating impersonations that crack and crunch my voice. Uh, I have to maintain some semblance of endurance for the next uh, 76 hours. So uh, with that say, let's go ahead and start out with a little chairman of the board. And then we will get to what I had promised Antiderivative Jill, as I know that they are going to be uh, probably hanging out over there at uh, Curators in just a wee bit. So I need to go ahead and get that hustle on. So let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Tony Stark fights the woke, he's a cool exec who's full of jokes as Iron Man. He will judge, send Kathleen and Kurtzman holding a drug. He will save Marvel, yes he can. All about culture, that's Iron Man. Bum, ba, da, 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 bum, ba, da, 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 bum, ba, da, 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 ooh. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. These vagabond shoes are longing to stray. Right through the very heart of it, New York, New York. I want to wake up in a city that doesn't sleep and find I'm king of the hill, top of the heap. These little town blues are melting away i'll make a brand new start of it in old new york if i can make it there i'll make it anywhere it's up to you new york new york New York, New York, I want to wake up in a city that never sleeps and find I'm a number one, top of the list, king of the hill, a number one. These little 
town blues are melting away. I'm gonna make a brand new start of it in old New York. If I can make it there, I'm gonna make it anywhere. It's up to you, New York, New York, New need to wake up a little bit. I kind of flipped there. I kind of flipped there. We got ourselves more people entering the chat. Let us go ahead and welcome them right directly. <laughs> Hail to Antiderivative Jill. It's good to see Billy Power Max. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Then we got Jedi Bill. We have Mikey Susie Ford. We have everybody hanging out with us tonight. Thank you guys for choosing me and thank you all for hanging out. And our goal tonight is the perfect evil, the 666th a subscribe y'all as it were we are currently 10 away from that number and we have acquired 23 new subscribers since the announcement of the sub drive so thank you guys so much for supporting the channel as pj at orville nation likes to say we do indeed grow together and with that let us go ahead and do star trekking for anti-derivative jill and i think i've gotten quite good quite good at singing this without the karaoke uh, track. So give me one second. Let me whip my whistle. This is a bit of a toughie. And since I'm already a little off key tonight, we really need to find our center. Mm. <clears throat> All right. Let's give that one another shot, shall we? <clears throat> Here's a little... Uh, stuck trekking by the firm, and I should probably, at the very least, uh, 655. Oh, so we're back down to 655. I had somebody enter and then someone leave. No, I'm at 656 so far that, uh, that I have that I have counted, but yes, um, let me go ahead and adorn the Starfleet uniform, yeah, for you all tonight. <clears throat> This goes out to uh, anti-derivative Jill for her uh, successful uh, over the over the over them. It's a shot for the moon, went to the stars. You know, for, you know, first star on the right, uh, head there till morning. Uh, congratulations on your one thousand. Uh, you and uh, Michael Lorber are now in the four-figure club. I do need ten more for the perfect evil, and best believe that Alistar will have one right after pop culture breakdown. And uh, I did a lot. I did some work for that uh, show uh, as well. And so uh, it is, I believe, safe to say that uh, you will also see me there in Pop Culture Breakdown tomorrow night. Unless some last minute things happen. So let's go ahead and sing this one for NT Derivative Jill. <clears throat> or as Carla would say, Anti Derivative Jill. Star Trekking across the universe. On the Starship Enterprise under Captain Kirk. Star Trekking across the universe. Boldly going forward because we can find reverse. Lieutenant Uhura, report. There's Klingons on the starboard bow, starboard bow, starboard bow. There's Klingons on the starboard bow, starboard bow, Jim. Analysis, Mr. Spock. It's a life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. Not as we know it. It's a life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it, Captain. There's Klingons on the starboard bow, starboard bow, starboard bow. There's Klingons on the starboard bow, starboard bow, Jim. Star Trekking across the universe. On the Starship Enterprise under Captain Kirk. A Star Trekking across the universe. Finally going forward and still can't find reverse. Medical update, Dr. McCoy. It's worse than that. He's dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. It's worse than that. He's dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. Dead. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. Not as we know it. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it, Captain. That's going on the starboard bow. Starboard bow. Starboard bow. That's going on the starboard bow. Starboard bow, Jim. Starship Captain James T. Kirk. <laughs> we 
come and fish, shoot to kill, shoot to kill, shoot to kill. We come and fish, shoot to kill, shoot to kill, man. It's worse than that. He's dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. It's worse than that. He's dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. Dead. Well, it's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. It's not as we know it. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it, Captain. That's Clay Guns on the Starboard Bow. Starboard Bow. Starboard Bow. That's Clay Guns on the Starboard Bow. Sweep him off, Jim. The Star to reckon across the universe. And the Starship fit the prize under Captain Gunn. The Star to reckon across the universe. Finally going forward and things are getting worse. Engine room. Mr. Scott. You cannot change the laws of physics, laws of physics, laws of physics. You cannot change the laws of physics, laws of physics, Jim. Ha! We come in peace. Shoot to kill. Shoot to kill. Shoot to kill. We come in peace. Shoot to kill. Scotty, beat me up. It's worse than that. He's dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. It's worse than that. He's dead, Jim. Dead, Jim. Dead. Well, it's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it. Not as we know it. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. Not as we know it, Captain. That's Clay Guns on the Starry Bow. Starry Bow. Starry Bow. This Clay Guns on the Starry Bow. Starry Bow, Jim. And you cannot change the string of the engines. It's worse than that. physics, Jim. But it's the engine one. Fuck. Back to nine. And I can't give it any blow. She'll blow, Captain. Star to reckon across the universe on the Starship Enterprise under Captain Kirk. A star to reckon across the universe. Boldly going forward, still can't find reverse. Captain's log, star date. 1312.4. The impossible has happened. From looking directly ahead, we're picking up a recorded distress signal. Call letters of a vessel which has been missing for over two centuries. Did another Earth ship once probe out to the galaxy as we intend to do? What happened to it out there? Is it some warning that they left behind? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yes. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, cheers, cheers. So uh, we have ourselves a Disney sheep herder and an Alabama hellbilly. Hail to you, kind sir. It is a pleasure to see you. Many, many slices of bacon. Kiala does a Borloff impression. No, I said Boris Korloff. I was going anti-derivative Jew. Speaking of Boris Korloff, I know it's not Halloween just yet, but... I feel like doing a little bit more Karloff for you. What do you say? A little Boris Pickett, as it were. Little Bobby Boris Pickett, yes. I was working in the lab late one night when my eyes beheld an eerie sight for my monster from his slab began to rise. Then suddenly, to my surprise, he did the mash. He did the monster mash. The monster mash. It was a graveyard smash. He did the mash. It caught on in a flash. He did the mash. He did the monster mash from my laboratory in the castle east to the master bedroom where the vampires feast. The ghouls all came from their humble abodes to get a jolt from my electrodes. They did the mash and they did the monster mash. The monster mash, it was a graveyard smash. They did the mash, it caught on in a flash. They did the mash. They did the monster mash. The zombies were having fun. Ten issue, what? The party had just begun. Ten issue, uh, the guests included Wolfman, Dracula, and his son. The scene was rocking. All were digging the sounds. I got on chains, packed by his paying hounds. The coffin bangers were about to arrive with their vocal group. The Crypt Kicker 5, they played the mash. Yes, they did. The Monster Mash. The Monster Mash. It was a graveyard smash. They played the mash. It caught on in a flash. They did the mash. They played the Monster Mash. Out from his coffin, Drax's voice did ring. Seems he was troubled by just one thing. He opened the lid, shook his fist, and said, Whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? It's now the mash. It's now the monster mash. The monster mash. And it's a graveyard smash. It is the mash. It caught on in a flash. The monster mash.
It is the Monster Mash. Now everything's cool. Tracks a part of the band. And my Monster Mash is the hit of the land. For you, the living, this mash was meant to. When you get to my door, tell them Boris sent you. Then you can mash. You can monster mash. The monster mash. And do my graveyard smash. And then you mash. It'll catch on with a flash. The monster mash. Then you can monster mash. <laughs> mash good. <laughs> Easy, Igor, you impetuous young boy. <laughs> there you go. Stone Racket is bringing his children, I guess, Harpo and Chico, uh, respectively, I would assume. Yes? Susan Dolan says, don't know if you know it on YouTube, but Boris call up to the video version of the Monster Mash. is excellent as only the king of the monsters could do it as absolutely. I'm gonna have to hunt that bad boy down. Uh, I was uh, leaning more towards uh, towards uh, Bobby Pickett, but you know that's because he has a good Karlov impersonation. And uh, thank you guys for hanging out with me. And I'm glad that uh, I think that's from Shindig. Uh, ooh, 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 Nito Toledo. Can't wait to give that a ripe old tickle, a little tickle, wouldn't you say so? Absolutely, absolutely. So let's go ahead and see where we are. The 656 on deck. Uh, again, once we get to that coveted 666, if I'm in the middle of a song or or whatever, I mean, you know, just keep liking and sharing and, and send this puppy out and letting everybody know that we are here today uh, for you. So let's go ahead and... Do you want one more song? I think we got one more song in us. Wouldn't you say so? Let's sing another tune. Another lovely tune for you all. Let's go back to the chairman of the board because we must find our vocal center. So let's go with something that I know a lot of people have heard before and on other channels as well. But I will sing this one again because I like to consider myself the second stage a humble second stage uh, to some of the greatest YouTubers out there. And I know that I have his blessing. Freebird. Oh, Freebird. You want Freebird. You want me to sing that a cappella? Well, uh, I will I will adhere to your request. What was Bill's reaction to you having Journal 3? He said, burn it. <laughs> Thank you all for choosing me tonight. Uh, it is an honor and a pleasure to have you all here this fine evening air guitar it oh my god air guitar the solo i tell you what let's meet down the middle i'll give you the studio cut how's that sound ensign rusher will you accept the studio cut for me so that i don't have to air solo for six minutes will that will that will that appease your demand <laughs> deal all right then, <clears throat> per a request of Ensign Rusher, who is uh, who is a very very awesome individual. He um, he works uh, works really really hard to ensure that people are earning their keep. I've watched more piano. I, I will I'll hook up the piano, but I got to be careful because the last time that I played a piano tune, YouTube's uh, melody was actually able to pick it up. They were able to pick it up, and I got copyright claimed for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I take that as a compliment, but I got to be very careful with the copyright claims because I don't want to lose all of the members that I have, which I now have 110 of you fine guys. And, and, you know, and I cannot wait to just entertain each and every one of you with member streams coming up to and the member shows, the member vids, the death races. I, I'm overwhelmed. It, it, yes, YouTube AI is indeed getting quite creepy. I do agree. Uh, I thought, you know, because I, I like to consider myself a piano player. I, I know that's a Simpsons joke uh, because most people play piano or consider themselves a pianist. I, li I like playing that tavern uh, piano uh, occasionally, that, that Tin Pan Alley kind of ragtime tune. You know what I mean? Not, 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 not Mozart or anything fanciful. No, 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 no. no Harlem Sweep, though. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, mostly... Uh, 
mostly uh, taught that style, even though uh, my piano teacher in, in my youth uh, was very friendly with my knuckles with a yardstick. Every time I looked down, every time I skipped a step, every time I uh, hit a flat, uh, it, <laughs> it was it was it was fun times. But Ensign Rusher, here is a little uh, Leonard Skinnerd. Uh, can you play some Leonard Skinner, please? I'd like to get on my hands and knees. It's time to play some Leonard Skinner, please. Like simple man, or call me the breeze. Yes, welcome to each and every one of you fine people in the chat. I hope that you uh, enjoy this program that I have uh, set up for us tonight. And uh, please let me know if I'm doing quite well. Hello, all. It's a B. It's a stone wreck. It's <laughs> should have played with a gauntlet on. Then it would have sounded like crap. <laughs> right? She would no, no knowing, <laughs> knowing my teacher, knowing Mrs. Barnes, she would have smacked me through the the armor. And still made my knuckles bleed because she was just that much of a, a of a um, of a taskmaster. <laughs> uh, so I will sing this song in just a second. I got a uh, fella at the door. So after these messages, we'll be right back. That's a lovely, lovely voice. Back to formula. <laughs> Hello out there in the YouTube sphere. It's I, Bane, here to tell you about my friend Appion's YouTube channel. It's Appion with a zero, not an O. So if you try to find him with an O, you probably won't find him. So that's right off the bat, that'll help you. Subscribe to his channel. You'll see shows like Two Guys Talking every Saturday, where two buffoons talk about different movies and TV shows for about an hour and a half. Sometimes Morgan Freeman even shows up. And he does watch parties and plays video games as well. Thank you, and enjoy the channel. If I leave here tomorrow, would you still remember me? For I must be traveling on now. Cause there's too many places I've got to see But if I stay here with you, girl Things just couldn't be the same Cause I'm as free as a bird now And this bird you cannot change Oh, and this bird you cannot change. And this bird you cannot change. Lord knows I can't change. My bye, baby, it's a sweet love. Though this feeling I can't change. But please don't take it so badly Cause Lord knows I'm to blame But if I stay here with you, girl Things just couldn't be the same Cause I'm as free as a bird now and this bird you cannot change oh and this bird you cannot change and this bird you cannot change 
Lord knows I can't change. Lord help me, I can't change. I can't change. Won't you fly high? Free bird, Lord, I can't change. Won't you fly free bird? Yeah. Bam. There you go. Hopefully that was to your liking. And in Russia. Hopefully you found that one a particular uh, tune for you this fine evening. <clears throat> And again, that was very studio cuttish, but I had to do something, or else it was going to be nine minutes long. <laughs> and again, thank you guys for hanging out with me this wonderful evening. So this is when we thank him like so, okay? All right, what do you mean thank? Uh, well, thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. You're most welcome. I'm happy, I'm happy to, to provide. Uh, for you. And again, everything that I do, I want to put my best foot forward. So as we are going to go ahead and go back to what I was going to sing, uh, this is another one by uh, the uh, the chairman of the board, <clears throat> Frank Sinatra. It goes a little bit like this. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. In other words, baby, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. Oh, fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, in other words, in other words, I love boom, boom, boom you. Hey, Tail Tapion, sir. Welcome, sir. Yes. Uh, well, thank you for making your ad. Uh, as I told you, I would run it in my commercial blocks. And I, 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 whatever I may, one thing that you'll find out, whether it'll take me 10 minutes or up to a year or longer, if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to make sure that I do it. I'm not the kind of person that's just going to go, well, I'll do this and I'll do that because <laughs> I want to make everybody want to be a people pleaser. No. I'm honor bound and duty bound to be able to say without 110% of a doubt that I can and will do everything that I set my mind to. If you set your mind to it, you can accomplish anything, Marty. The future's not written yet. No one's has. <laughs> like the Joker of 
of the Dark Knight, Dark Knight, he says, you are a man of your word. I am indeed a man of my word. And Ensign Rusher with a generous $5 super sticker of a couple of guys giving out a high five. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you. Do let me know if there's anything else you would like for me to do. I would not mind one way or the other to do it for you. Thank you, sir, for supporting me and making sure that I don't just eat ramen for the next two weeks because I am furloughed from my nine to five job and I've decided it's the time to kick YouTube over time. And I'm sorry, uh, something came up, got a bounce. That's perfectly fine, Bello. Uh, just let everybody know that I'm live on your way out if you could. And uh, if you'd like, to hang out i'll be i'll be i'll be i'll be running all night i'll be running about about to like 12 or 1 in the morning so i'm sure that uh you know if it's something serious i will pray for you so uh if it is something serious i hope that uh you get that sorted out uh everybody uh just keep uh, bella triggerfish in your thoughts it sounds like he's got to do something super fast and had to uh leave the broadcast which um our thoughts and prayers go with you. Um, hail again, once again, to Appion. That, that, of course, that was, you know, a wonderful, wonderful ad that you put together. Yes, <laughs> it's probably one of the best commercials in the role now. And I got a reel of them now. If you want, if you have a channel, and this is something I, that I will go ahead and say, I will go ahead and I will do my community plugs now. If you have a channel that you would like to make a 90 to, uh, or a 30 to a 90 second ad for, I will run those blocks on my tower after hours, and I will run those blocks on my matinees. And that, because, you know, I, I, I cannot stress this enough. I quote PJ. I say, I say, quite frankly, I say, we grow together. Now, I says to him, now, now I says, I says, I says to him, I says, we grow together. Repita, por favor, we grow together. Yes. And so I don't care one bit, just as long as you don't go and be like, oh, well, that's 100% my commercial. I'm going to dispute it. I mean, because, I mean, it's kind of a gentleman's handshake. <laughs> you know what I mean? But <laughs> here we are. Um, but uh, I will always support everybody that I've encountered, you know, going forward. You know, so please, if you got a channel and you want a commercial, you want a com commercial for it. Yes, if you had some ads for your books, yes, get send them to me, Alabama Hillbilly at uh, S Industries. I don't email. If you have ads that you would like for me to promote, if you have just scripts. If you like the Radio Demon or Doctor Evil to promote, I can I can I can slap those together in like half an hour. Just provide me scripts to read if you're not good at making your own video compilations. I don't care one way or another to make to make an ad for you. And also, this here is where you send your parody songs. I am hosting a contest for all of the parody songs. Now Susan Dolan has already entered one. Um, I need to run that by DC tomorrow night at the after show of PCB to see if he's okay with it. That's the only reason why I'm not singing it tonight. Because DC's name is in it. And that is copyrighted to DC. There, there is a step-by-step -step process to these things. Uh, but I'm sure that he'll be okay with it one way or the other. And if it isn't, then I can always change it and to fit my channel and its broadcast. But anybody who would like to submit a parody tune, just give me what it is to the tune of and the lyrics. Uh, don't just make it one paragraph where I have to split it up myself and figure it out. And uh, it could be about anything. It could be about what you ate today. It could be about how, what you did at work. Or it could be something about Disney or Paramount Plus, Star Wars, uh, you know, all this stuff. And speaking of pop culture news, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll continue another daily on the eights. Uh they are releasing the Fallout show on Amazon Prime early, as in, prop, you know, after I get done with this tonight. Now, I do have a program on Sunday afternoon that is a reactor side chat specifically for Fallout, and we had discussed it last Sunday that we were going to be covering the show in detail. 
But if there is enough demand for it, I will host a backstage watch party tonight. And I will I will run my Amazon Prime through it. But I'm going to need some PayPal incentive for that to pay for the extra bandwidth. I, I broadcast on a hotspot for my phone. And it's an it's a cheap AT&T phone. It's 10 bucks for five gigs. So I would need like 30 bucks to pay for that extra service before Sunday. If not, we will have to wait till Sunday to to broadcast it because I get paid Friday. For at least from last work week. So if that's something you guys want to do, I can set that up for I can set that up for you all, but I gotta be able to pay for it. Because again, where I have this show tonight. PCB tomorrow, possibly Radio Demon, if I hit the 666, and then the matinee Thursday night with what I have on my card, it's barely, it's severely limited to what I can spend. So with that stated, uh, one moment while I go ahead and say once again, after these messages, we'll be right back. <laughs> And of course, that is Ranker Steve's Manorama that will be happening uh, at 10 o'clock on YouTube and Rumbles uh, specifically. Uh, if you ha- want to give them a, ch- you want to check them out and go right ahead. Um, everybody is streaming right now. I think Midnight's Edge is. I think Admiral Teague is. I think everybody is streaming right now. So by all means, if you have other engagements, I will be here all night. I will be here after certain shows end. Please support everybody. You know, I'll be here. I promise. <laughs> uh, with that stated, let's go ahead and sing one more tune, and then we'll go ahead and we'll bring out Dr. Evil. How's that sound, folks? Does that sound good to you all? I think it sounds pretty good to me. One moment here. Let's sing one more by Sinatra. And this uh, this one goes out to, uh, to my good friend Susan Dolan, who is also enduring some financial struggles of her own. Um... And also to uh, Mary Ashmead, the Queen of the Wrenches, who had recently lost her kitty cat. And to, you know, Beth Arstead, who is recovering from her surgery. I have no updates on her. You know, this song, this this goes out to everybody whose life is down and out. Uh, You know, it, it always gets better. If you hit rock bottom, the only way you can go is up. Everybody has their own personal narrative. Everybody has their own life story that they are the protagonist of, that they have their own their own oppositions that they face. And the Lord doesn't put anything in front of us uh, that we cannot overcome. And that's the reason why he puts it in front of us, for us to overcome it, for us to, to become stronger people. But yes, we I see the demand for Dr. Evil. So let's get off this happy moment, sing the song. And uh, just remember these folks in your prayers. There are many, many more out in the community. <laughs> and then we will get to uh, our good friend, Dr. Evil, who uh, is probably also uh, going to go over some of his evil plans with us tonight. Because <laughs> Lord knows uh, we have some evil plans lined up for you all. So let's go ahead and sing this song right quick and then get out our first uh, guest of the night. Let's go ahead and do that for you all. All righty. Da, 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 da. Well, this is interesting. Might want to put that over there. There we are. <clears throat> so I'm down and so I'm out. But so are many others. So I feel like trying to hide my head beneath these covers. Life is like the seasons. After winter comes the spring. So I'll keep 
this smile a while and see what tomorrow brings. I've been told and I believe that life is meant for living. And even when my chips are low, there's still some left for giving. I've been many places, maybe not as far as you. So I think I'll stay a while and see if my dreams come true. There isn't much that I have learned through all my foolish years, except that life keeps running in cycles. First there's laughter, then those tears. But I'll keep my head up high, although I'm kinda tired. My gal just up and left last week. Friday I got fired. You know it's almost funny, but things can't get worse than now. So I'll keep on trying to sing, but please just don't ask me now. All right. And again, just remember those people in your prayers. Uh, Susan Dolan goes on to say, I do have a kitty video on YouTube TV. It is her mouse brigade. And I hope that one day they can start paying for their own fool and medical issues for spaying and neutering. Yes. As somebody who owns a hive of cats, respectively, I know your pain. But speaking of somebody who is also a cat dad and a cat lover, the sea of emojis over here, it cannot lie. They want it. They need it. They gotta have it. It is none other than our good, and by that I mean our evil compadre, Mr. I mean Dr. Evil. Everybody give him a round of applause and bring him in. Uh, so, uh, how are you feeling today, Doctor? Well, I tell you how well I feel. One million dollars. feel like a million dollars, Mr. Stark, like a million dollars. Hello, everybody out there in YouTube land. It is I, your future delegate over Nuke York after Mr. Stark gets highly irradiated drinking Nuke Cola. I will now be broadcasting unto you a few of my evil schemes, and then we will be going over the next ten parcels of the evil overlord list. Yes, uh, uh, do you have do you have any new schemes for us today, Doctor? Any new schemes at all? Of course I do, and I will have you know that these new evil schemes that I have brought unto you are fresh out of the pot. Yes, Stone Racket, be very afraid. Mr. Bigglesworth says hello to Mr. Chico and Mr. Harpo. I have started a smear campaign and fear-mongering AI-delegated means of operations where individuals all over the world will be overreacting over the upcoming solar eclipse. The general malaise that will result from these widespread panic will cause economic stress that I shall profit from. Da -da -da. Um, Dr. Evil. Yes, you're getting better. You're getting better. What do you mean I'm getting better? You missed the eclipse by like 36 hours. Really? Yes, 36 hours. The eclipse happened? Why was it I fucking notified? I, 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 hey, I'm just saying. You're getting better. <laughs> no, this, this, I don't like this. I don't like this. This was my first new evil plan in quite a while. Yes, I am indeed uh, sponsored by Manscaped. And in fact, here is my not-so-official promo. 
It is often said that an evil doctor needs to look his best, but he also should perform his best. And in order for that to happen, he must be most comfortable at his best. With that stated, this evil doctor shall now be providing unto you the best in men's health care with Manscaped. That's right. With Manscaped. With Manscaped, I am able to make my lower head as shiny as my upper head. Because of an individual of my age and stature and comfort needs, and the fact that I do have a set of testicles that swing between my legs like the pendulum of a grandfather clock. I am uh, well aware of how sensitive that I must have these particular implements used upon my scrotum. So with that, I must also state, yes, I will shave properly with Manscaped. Admiral Teague has gifted the channel five more uh, new S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Welcome. Thank you, sir. And for that, we will roll your commercial. And I believe that you're doing a member stream right now, subsequently. But I will go ahead and I will roll your commercial for that. And thank you. And Stone Racket, have yourself a wonderful evening. After we get back from this quick commercial and endorsement, we will go ahead and we will do the next 10 parts of the Evil Overlord list. Does that sound good to you, Mr. Stark? Yeah, that sounds perfect. All right, roll, roll the clip. Absolutely. The Admiral says they're communicating with every ship to make sure they have the proper equipment and the sailors are trained in case something like this happens again. On ABC 10 News at 5, the Admiral shares some of the stories of heroism that he heard about after meeting with those sailors. Come on, don't bullshit me. Spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that Everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. Uh, there. <laughs> and there, as you saw, as we promised, an exciting end to the Starship inaugural integrated test flight. Hey there, everybody. It's your buddy, Admiral Teague. Hit those like and follow buttons for my pal, Tony Sark, and check out my show, Saving Star Trek, Fridays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time. And we thank you for that donation. The new S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are as follows. We got Margo's We Scottish Garden, Real, Real Wage Nation Gaming Live. Say that three times fast with my, my voice. London City Events, Jeff Lancaster, and J.D. Kirby. Thank you, guys. I hope that you all enjoyed the death race coming up later on in the week. And now we shall go ahead and we shall discuss a new kind of list. Oh, yes. Are you ready to... Uh... We're rounding the bend. We've only got 30 left. Well, I'm only doing 10 tonight. And then you're doing most likely 10 on Thursday, right? And then the last 10 will be after Doomcock's Friday Night Frolics. Oh! And then I'm going to be off the hook of this damn thing. Oh! Sometimes I think you're blessed to not be able to work. Excellent. We can get through this damned thing this week. Perfect. Number 70. When my guards split up to search for intruders, they will always travel in groups of at least two. They will be trained so that if one of them disappears mysteriously while on patrol, the other will immediately initiate an alert to call for backup instead of quizzically peering around a corner. I agree with this. I expect my minions to be well trained. I want SOCOMs. I want Navy SEALs. I want Rangers. I want Clocketeers in my army of evil. They need to be able to do their jobs efficiently. I agree with this one. This is perfect. No, no gripes at all. Not a single one. Wow. Number 71. If I decide to test a lieutenant's loyalty to see if he or she should be made a trusted lieutenant, I will have a crack squad of marksmen standing by in case the answer is no. Well, a lieutenant should be a trusted lieutenant. And while this 
reeks of Scotty's, you know, desires to just shoot first and ask questions later, I guess this makes some semblance of sense. I'd rather spend the amount of money it costs to put a bullet into the brain of a potential traitor than to pay them salary. Seems logical to me. I give this one 60 Number 73, I will not agree to let the heroes go free if they win a rigged contest. Even though my advisors assure me it is impossible for them to win. Absolutely. If they are my prisoners, they are my entertainment. They will not be set free. Number 74, when I create a multimedia presentation of my plan design so that my five-year-old advisor can easily understand the details, I will not label the disc Project Overlord and leave it lying on the top of my desk. I, I Are you sure this is... This sounds like it makes too much sense. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. I thought you would totally be ranting and raving about how Scotty wrote this list by now. Number 75, I will instruct my legions of terror to attack the hero in mass. Instead of standing around waiting while members break off and attack one or two at a time. I agree. Wow, this is this is this is anticlimactic, folks. I'm, I'm so sorry. I figured he'd be pissed off by now. Number 76, if the hero runs up to my roof, I will not run up after him and struggle with him and attempt to push him over the edge. I will also not engage him at the edge of a cliff or in the middle of a rope bridge or over a river of molten lava. It's not even worth considering. I like my safety. I like my butt firmly plugged. What? You heard me. I don't want anything else entering it, so you're going to have something plug it. You get, you get where I'm going with this? What? I would like to have my butt rightly plugged. That's like a defensive measure. No, that is a uh, sexual measure. No, it isn't. Get your mind out of the gutter. No, no. You're the one with the mind in your gutter talking about your butt play being plugged. What? No, no. We're moving on. Number 77. If I have a fit of temporary insanity and decide to give the hero the chance to reject the job as my trusted lieutenant, I will retain enough sanity to wait until my current trusted lieutenant is out of earshot before making the offer. Here's one for you. If they're my arch nemesis, I don't want them on my side. I will instead... Utilize sharks with freaking laser beams on their freaking heads. There we go. Shut up, you. No. Bullshit. Scotty, stop writing these in the fucking list. <laughs> there we go. I knew we'd trigger him. Number 78, I will not tell my allegiance of terror. And he must be taken alive. The command will be... And try to make him alive if it's reasonably practical. No! Take him alive! I want to shoot him. I want to kill him. I want to sacrifice him slowly over a pit of molten hot magma. Not, not this crap. No. <laughs> Hail to fermented cinema in the chat, as well as James Caserta. Hail to sci-fi Sith Dan. It is a pleasure. To see you all out this fine evening. It's good to see you all. And yes, I know that you're currently busy with your membership stream. Thank you for your support, Ed Morteague. It is much appreciated. Are you, have you calmed down now? <laughs> no. This is bullshit. Number 79, if my doomsday device happens to come with a reverse switch, as soon as it's been employed, it will be melted down and made into a limited edition commemorative coin. I kind of like that one. It's very thematic. Oh, you think so? Yes. And number 80. If my weakest troops fail to eliminate the hero, I will send out my best troops instead of wasting time with progressively stronger ones as it gets closer and closer to my fortress. This also checks out. But seriously, if I'm going to be sending my elite squads out there to do any kind of damage... To whatever narrative protagonist thinks that they have the, the God-given right to attack me as I try to conquer the world. They got another thing's coming. Indeed. No, Sci-Fi Sith Dan. That is the wrong element of the list. <laughs> 
I, I, I used to have a base in a hollowed out volcano, Ray Lucard. Why do you ask? Although Temple of Doom is indeed at number 80, I will not buy my evil supplies from Acme. They are indeed shit. I agree. Absolutely. Do you want to give them the monologue about your about your parents before you had? I suppose. I suppose we could do that for these fine folks here. Here we go. Uh, Dr. Evil in the house going to be doing a little discussion about my childhood. This goes out to Robert Wright. This is the favorite thing that he has me do. And then if... Should I cover the other evil plans? I mean, if you must. Of course. Of course. Of course. I would do those first. There you go. That's right. Work up an appetite. Yes. We will give out the breadsticks before we give out the Thanksgiving turkey. I don't think those really coincide. <laughs> Okay, let's go. <clears throat> I have created a weather dominator. With this weather dominator, I will create a category 5.5 super hurricane. And I will direct it into the United States Oil Reserves in Texas. And let's just go ahead and take care of St. Louis. Nobody showed me any titties during Mardi Gras. I call the project da -na -na Katrina. <laughs> uh, Dr. Evil, there was subsequently uh, 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 an evil, uh, an evil uh, event, uh, an act of God, even uh, not really evil. There was a hurricane Katrina. There was. Yes. And it, and it, it did what I, I intended it to do. Yes. It caused a lot of economic stress. Uh, gas prices went up to almost seven dollars a gallon. Son of a bitch. Okay, all right. Moving on, moving on. I got this one. This one goes out to fermented cinema. I have created a seismic detonator. Did you come up with that yourself? Yes, I did. With this seismic detonator, I will create a sub-oceanic earthquake on the Pacific Plate resulting in a tsunami that will charge into the structurally inept Fukushima reactor in Japan. This will cause radioactive water to spray out into the Pacific for decades to come, causing fishing market damage in the East. Da -da -da. That, that, that also happened, Dr. Evil. What? It was a tsunami. It uh, There was? Yes. And, and it caused irreparable damage to the nuclear reactor in Tokyo, the Fukushima reactor specifically. But that thing wasn't up to code. That would have been the perfect... They're... I'm just saying. That's bullshit. Tell you what. Okay. All right. I got this one. I have a series of sleeper agents that are working in multiple studios that are capable of ruining everything you know about pop culture. That's right. Your living mythologies will soon be ruined by a woke liberal agenda. <laughs> da -da -da. That... Why the fuck do you think we're here? What do you mean? Why do you think we're here? You mean, yes. That's been happening for like 10 years, possibly longer. No way. You're kidding me. And these people were like the most idiotic of the idiotic. I, I spent uh, like six months plucking them out of their little communes and community colleges. And all. I, 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 it was a foolproof plan. Well, you're a little behind the time, sir. <laughs> See, fermented cinemas like you forgot inept. No, I didn't. I said they're dumb. Number 81, even though that is not 81, Me Mikey says, meat helmets are a central part of everyone's breakfasts. Dr. Evil, I can tell that you have a lot of pent-up anger issues, you know that? Trying to pull an Operation Paperclip and join the winning side, I see. Peace treaty with a guy who works for Doomcock. I'll have you know that I have my own evil empire, but you come onto my show and I work for Doomcock. I don't care. You're, the radiation's going to kill you. 
All the radiation did to me was sterilize me. It, 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 the damage is done. You hear this guy? What a rude motherfucker. I'll have you know that there's a reason why I am so rude. And the details about my life are quite inconsequential. Oh, no. Oh, please, please, please. Let's, let's hear about your childhood. Very well. Where do I begin? My father was a relentlessly self-improving boulangerie owner from Belgium with low-grade narcolepsy and a penchant for buggery. My mother was a 15-year-old French prostitute named Chloe with webbed feet. My father would womanize. He would drink. He would make outrageous claims like he invented the question mark. Sometimes he would accuse chestnuts of being lazy, the sort of general malaise that only the genius possess and the insane lament. My childhood was typical, summers in Rangoon, luge lessons. In the spring, we would make the aforementioned meat helmets. That's right, Mikey, meat helmets. When I was insolent, I would be placed in a burlap bag and beaten with reeds. Pretty standard, really. By the age of 12, I received my first scribe. And at 14, a Zoroastrian named Vilma ritualistically shaved my testicles with Manscaped. There's nothing really like a shorn scrotum. It's breathtaking. I suggest you try it. Okay, Dr. Evil, you're done. Get out of here. I will have my revenge. You'll see it. I will return. <laughs> But in the meantime, while we're at the subject, since Fermented Cinema is here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hijack your show. What are you talking about? After these messages. Hey, hey, I'm supposed to do that. We'll be right back. Welcome to Fermented Cinema. Our studios span an entire guest bedroom with some other junk. Using a mishmash of so-so equipment, we are busy creating top-notch entertainment critiquing film, TV, and the entertainment industry in general. And boy, there's a lot to say these days. Join Fermented Cinema on our attempt to become relevant. Like, share, subscribe. Who is this who enters unannounced? You know damn well who. I am Fett. For hire. By the legendary Fett for hire. Stand and fight! Hey! What you gonna do when I stand and fight? Hey! Am I trying to go over? Wrong or right? From a point of view and it's back to score when I get Ah, uh, Dr. Evil, everyone. Uh, hopefully you guys got a, got yourself a good uh, dose of some evil. Not that semi-evil, not that quasi-evil, not that Diet Coke of evil. But, you know, true, a true uh, Dr. Evil uh, for you guys uh, tonight. And uh, speaking of which, let's go ahead and get right back uh, to some music. Let's do a parody. We haven't done a parody yet. Let's do uh, one that I know that everyone loves so well. <clears throat> let's go ahead and knock this one out of the park. There are few who deny at late night I get no rest, for my talents are needed far and wide. When it comes to doing voices after work, that's right, I excel without ever even trying. With the slightest little effort of my iron charms, I have seen my chat give out a laugh. With a wave of my hand and a well-placed drink, I have made the best of watching all this crap. But show after show, it's the same routine, and I grow so weary of complaining streams, and I, Stock the Singing King, have grown so weary. Of the same old thing. 
Oh, somewhere deep inside of my soul, an emptiness began to grow. There's something out there for me to watch, a worthy show I've never known. I'm a master of Rick and a pundit a prick, and I'll wow you right out of your pants. I'm that guy in Kentucky who's really unlucky because I want to see storylines enhanced. The next stream I dread makes me hurt in the head that I numb with furious libation. I'm belligerent and mad who drinks what I can to try and relieve my heated frustration but we all here to really understand that the iron man with the saturday show would tire of his mic if he found a show that's good he'd end the live now if he only could Oh, there's an empty place in my soul that calls out for things new and bold. The chats and praise come year after year that does nothing for these empty tears. Zero. <laughs> it is true. It is a sad state of affairs that we live in. But whilst I do not have much in the way of alcoholic libation tonight, I will go ahead and drink in spirit. Um, hopefully I can acquire enough funds to be able to get myself at the very least a six-pack for the next couple of nights. But I am currently completely out of bourbon. I'm comp completely out of whiskey. And uh, I think I have, like, a couple of old beers just uh, hanging around. So these empty beers, they are empty indeed. Mm. As I usually would have purchased another bottle right now, but I must penny pinch. Penny pinch. I suppose the next few songs could be about um penny pinch let's do uh let's do a pocket full of dreams how about that because i'm not gonna stop and i uh don't ever want to stop so let's do this one here pocket full of dreams a little bing crosby for you all how about that <clears throat> i'm no millionaire but i'm not the type to care Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams. It's my universe, even with an empty purse. Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams. I wouldn't take the wealth on Wall Street for a road where nature trods. And I calculate that I'm worth my weight in golden rods oh lucky lucky me i can live in luxury because i've got a pocket full of dreams with freedom lots of freedom ah, i'm no millionaire but i'm not the type to care because i've got a pocket full of dreams it's my universe, even with an empty purse, cause I've got a pocket full of dreams. No, I wouldn't take the wealth on Wall Street for a road where nature trods, and I calculate I'm worth my weight, yes, in golden rods. Oh, lucky, lucky me, I can live in luxury, Cause I've got a pocket full of dreams. Uh. <clears throat> oh, toss a penny to your stock of iron. He sings songs, you change tales from a faraway land. Yes, a horn of plenty. <laughs> I see your, I see your, I see your Witcher reference. Well done. 
We are five away from the coveted 666. Thank you guys for sharing the stream out and letting everybody know that I am here tonight. We are five away from the 666. And as soon, as soon as that hits, I want somebody to screenshot that. As soon as that hits, no matter what I'm doing, I'm going to let the radio demon take it for at least 30 minutes to an hour. I'm going to let him have it. Because that that we are right there. We are right there, folks. We are right there at the perfect evil. Can't wait. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go ahead and sing another song about money. Uh, this one's called Pennies from Heaven. Also <laughs> by Bing Crosby. <laughs> A lot of these, a lot of these wonderful tunes, um, uh, you know, these are like, you know, depression tunes. These are the, the Hoover Blanket, uh, the Hoover Blanket uh, wonders of the era. And, you know, so uh, I just, I feel it's, I feel it's appropriate. <clears throat> A long time ago, billion years B.C., the best things in life. We're absolutely free, but no one appreciated the sky that was always blue, and no one congratulated a moon that was always new. So it was planned that they would vanish now and then, and you must pay before you get them back again. That's what storms were made for, and you shouldn't be afraid for. Every time it rains, it rains pennies from heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains pennies from heaven? You'll find your fortune falling all over town. Be sure that your umbrella is upside down. Trade them for a package of sunflower and flowers. If you want the things you love, you must have showers. So when you hear it thunder, don't run under a tree. That's my tree. There'll be pennies from heaven for you and me. That's right. They would, or they would, they would shred you up. And uh, there is a variant of that song that I let Alistair sing from time to time about the uh, the morbid truth <laughs> of what those metallic tinder discs would do to your poor fleshy hide as they pelted you from from on high. Yes, uh, fermented cinema. You're absolutely correct with uh, that assessment. Um. I think we should just go ahead and wrap this bad boy up with uh, this one. I like I like trifectas. I like doing things in triplicate. I think it's a very nice way to present a theme or a segment. Uh, doing uh, not the one, not the two, but a three. <laughs> I can't ever make it to the middle without biting. Ask Mr. Owl. <laughs> Let's do this one. Let's go ahead since we... Also did a little car love tonight. We'll go ahead and we shall uh, sing the uh, putting on the Ritz version from uh, Young Frankenstein. Hail to Tim, uh, the enchanter in the chat. It is a pleasure to see you, sir. A man who is always first to the firing line. Indeedly do. You did not miss the party. We are just starting. Maria with tea and telly. It is a pleasure to see you, my dear. Now I uh, should probably bring out the radio demon early. I, 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 did you see uh, the prop that I finished? You shall sing off key. Well, that depends. Should I sing off key? Should I sing on the key? How about my car keys? Maybe if I put my car keys down there, I'd be like, ah, ah, ah. no, that, that's probably bad. But yes, I shall sing off key now. And we shall do it like this. It is a pleasure to see you, Maria. I hope that your day 
is uh, been well and that it is at the top of your day always. And I will go ahead and since you are also a fan of horror comedies and satire, then I will also dedicate this one for you. Uh, Rocco the Brave, it is a pleasure to see you as well. Taking this break on working, on saying hello. Heard you have better commercials than the Super Bowl. Well, what can I say? We did just have Appian send Bane to an arena. <laughs> So that is good. That is good. This one goes out for you, Maria. And I also I believe that you're also a friend of Kermit. So I have another song for you, too. So just don't touch that dial. Five more people. Operation 666. That's right. The Radio Demon will be taking over the stream for half an hour at the very least uh, as soon as that hits. <clears throat> Oh, if you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Oh, putting on the Ritz. Different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes and cutaway coat. Perfect fits. Oh, putting on the Ritz. Dressed up like a million dollar trooper. Trying hard to look just like Gary Cooper. Super duper, come let's make for all the fellers walk with sticks and umbrellas in their mitts. <laughs> there you go. Have you seen the well-to-do up and down Park Avenue on that famous thoroughfare with their noses in the air? High hats and arrow collars, white spats and lots of dollars spending every time. What a wonderful time. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? <laughs> Different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes and cutaway coat, perfect fits. <laughs> so dressing up like a million dollar trooper, trying hard not to look like Gary Cooper. <laughs> Super duper, come let's mix for Rockefellers. Walk with sticks or umbrellas in their midst. <laughs> Dressed up like a million dollar trooper. And trying hard not to look like Gary Cooper. <laughs> if you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? <laughs> Don't touch that dial. You'll have hair on your palms. <laughs> and this little segment was brought to you by the one thing that would bring you the best in all forms of smiles. That's right. Iodent toothpaste. For whenever you have that bad breath issue. It is good to see you. Good to see you, Richard Spade. Welcome, welcome to Defender. You have become a defender of New York City, Richard Spake. Hail to you, and thank you for joining the Iron Legion here. Uh, it means... So much to me. Uh, do you do you have a particular number that you would like to request? Peter Ball, I probably smelt that wrong. Was amazing. Yes. Yes, he was. Let's go ahead. It's good to see you, Richard Spake. Hail to you. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we are at 633, 663. We are getting very, very close. Each new member gets you a beer. Absolutely. Like I said, I don't have anything to drink right now. So the show may be just a tad bit rich, and I do apologize. You got my manga's gold? I do not, sir. I have no libation within my pantry. Uh, I am without work. I've been furloughed for a week. So I'm doing some overtime on YouTube. So uh, sadly, I do not have any uh, spirits or libation tonight. Uh, but I believe that we can probably rectify that with more music and spirits, at least in the genuine variety. So let us go ahead and sing another one. And we're going to go ahead and actually, since while we got Maria here, and I know that you're a big fan. I know, for shame, man. I'm broke. I'm broke. It's the first time I've been broke in a while. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this one uh, for Maria with T and Telly because I promised that I would sing her a Kermit the Frog tune. All right. Uh, hey, how, how's everyone doing? Hey, Kermit. Uh, how are you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, I understand that uh, we have a special guest in the chat tonight. It's a pleasure to see you, Maria. Uh, this has been about two years coming. Yeah, about, about two years. <laughs> I promised this to you about two years ago. But uh, uh, Kermit, uh, obviously, uh, you know which song that you're, you you need to do, correct? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I believe this one uh, hits very close to home. Uh, there's a reason why I wrote this particular uh, number. 
uh, I got fired by uh, those uh, assholes over at Warner. Um, you know, and of course, since the Muppets were kind of like subsidized, uh, Sesame Street was removed. We were all removed. And I'm currently without a job. Uh, Mr. Stark complains about being unemployed for a week. Try, try being unemployed for a year and a half, asshole. Hey, hey, calm down. Calm down. Well, you know, I do apologize for the potty mouth. This, uh, this uh, episode was brought to you by the letter A for the aforementioned potty word. I will promise not to uh, do any potty words. Uh, you got to keep it wholesome, at least until we get to uh, the number here. Let's go ahead and do that <clears throat> for our fine folks tonight. And thank you all for choosing Stark of Iron this wonderful evening. It is very, very happy to see you guys here today. So let's go ahead and uh, get right to it. <clears throat> uh, we'll talk. We'll talk for Meta Cinema. We'll talk. <clears throat> let's go ahead and do this now for you. Uh, a sci-fi sit fan, I'm currently running a program all night, but say hi to Pop and them. Um, it's a big internet, but anyway, let's continue. Let's actually get the song done for Maria. <clears throat> Why are there so many? Shows with a wall hope. Why do they ruin the vibe? Woke shows are real shit. And we try to ignore it. But then we will let it ride. So we say something about it with backlash. And they call us so many names. As someday we'll find it, the wall gas connection, the Kathleen's and Kurtzman's defame. We've seen that everyone that we grew up alongside has been erased so far. Drinking the blue milk, Luke ran off into hiding, and Captain in Pikeman's hair lifts far. I don't see the appeal with the new doctor, a 13th one ruining the timeline. A someday will beat it, the wall gas connection, the Kathleen's and Kurtzman's tonight. All of them ne'er do wells. Will not destroy our old magic. So where are the DVDs and all of our Blu-rays taking us back in time? For their things are simpler and everything made sense and nothing was out of line. For if we unite together and remember to fight for all that is right, and then we will crush it, the wall gas connection, and make Hollywood more bright. La da dee da 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 no, la da 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 no. Well, there we are. That's the reason why I don't have a job anymore. Mm -hmm. Did Kermit drop some LSD? Did you? Can't be. He's not slurring. He's definitely not slurring. Mm -hmm. Good to see you, Final 13. Hopefully you're doing well out there. And we also have uh, Tim is saying, I think he's drunk. Nope, I'm not drunk. Pop Culture Minefield, hail to you, sir. Welcome. Good to see you. Uh, you, you just missed the ass end of the show. And by that, I mean the A end of the show. Uh, this episode was brought to you by the letter A. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hail to uh, Gary and Keith out there. It's good to see you guys. Good to see you. And very, very good to see you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pass it back to Mr. Stark. And uh, hopefully he's got some way to recover from this. Yeah. Uh, why are you throwing me under the bus? Because I can slip under there. Haven't you ever played Frogger? Shut up. <laughs> 
Well, there's Kermit for you all. Hopefully, uh, you enjoyed that uh, cover, uh, Maria. Um, that was the first parody song that I ever wrote for this channel. And I wrote it about two years ago. Two years ago, a little bit more to the day. A little bit more to the day. Good to see you, though, uh, Pop Culture Minefield. Hail to Sean Card in the chat. It's good to see you. Thank you guys for showing all of your love to me today. It means a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, while we're on the subject of parodies, I think I might have one more here, if you'll indulge me. Have I tried the time warp? That depends. Do you do the time warp again? Or not? Now, I will go ahead and sing one that I am well-practiced in. And this is one of Wes Cagle's favorites while we load the next parody up here. Uh, let's go ahead and sing something that I love to sing. From Rocky Horror Picture Show, yes. Rocky Horror Picture Show. And then we'll do a transcript reading. That sounds like sounds like fun. How doesn't it? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. What the no 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 not you. I want this. You wretched device, you how dare you? Wretched device. Technology. Am I right or am I right? Hail to Susan Dolan, who has sent a $5 super sticker of great generosity. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, I've been thinking of writing a parody of it for Doctor Who. Well, do me a super solid, Richard Spake. I am hosting a contest. Uh, the after party after Friday Night Frolics into Saturday morning that I always do. I will be uh, singing everybody's parody songs that they submit to this address at S Industries. Big Boss at gmail.com, and you could find that there. Send me the parody. I will be putting it to a vote with the chat. Now, wh whoever wins that vote will get the piano treatment, as I will play a piano cover of it and release it as a single on my channel. But all of the songs that will be submitted will be sung and resung. So everybody, everybody's a winner if you, if you spend the time to creatively make a tune. But yes, I will do a piano cover of the winner after the votes are tallied in uh, Saturday night. So uh, please consider sending that parody my way, and I hope that I do it justice. All right, let's go ahead and do a little science fiction. Double feature. Michael Rennie was ill the day the earth stood still. But he told us where we stand. And Flash Gordon was there in silver underwear. Claude Rains was the invisible man. Then something went wrong for Fay Ray and King Kong. They got caught in a celluloid jam. And then at a deadly Base. It came from outer space, and this is how the message ran. Science fiction, double feature, Dr. X will build a creature, see androids fighting. Brad and Janet and Francis stars in Forbidden Planet Whoa, at the late night double feature picture show. I knew Leo G. Carroll was over a barrel when Tarantula took to the hills. And I really got hot when I saw Janet Scott fight a triffid that spits poison and kills. Dana Andrews said prunes 
gave him the runes, and passing them used lots of skills. But when worlds collide, said Sor Pal to his bride, I'm gonna give you some terrible thrills, like a, a science fiction double feature. Dr. X will build a creature. See androids fighting, Brad and Janet, and Francis stars in Forbidden Planet. Whoa. At the late night double feature picture show, I want to go oh, 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 to the late night double feature picture show by broadcasting company RKO. Whoa, oh, 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 to the late night. Double feature picture show and necking in the back row. Oh, ho, ho, ho. To the late night double feature picture show. Well, there we are. There we are. There we are. There we are. And uno mas. Uno mas. Still at 663, three away from the coveted perfect evil. We can get it. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate you. And I hope that you are enjoying these wonderful matinee tunes for us tonight. I think it's time for a petty song and then a transcript reading. What do you guys say? What do you guys say? Just some transcripts readings. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, I'm thinking about expediting the Gilbert Gottfried segment. Mmm, Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> what happens if I suddenly jump to 667? I'll still I'll still bring Alistair out. I need somebody to be able to get that screenshot to me though. So let's hope that uh, we don't we don't have to encounter uh, said uh, issue. But yes, yes, yes. Let us go ahead and uh, do uh, this one. Let me pull this bad boy up here. Yeah, let's do another one from Woke Mare. And this one has got just about as many fucks as one fuck could give all the fucking time, those motherfuckers. And it goes a little bit like this. The fuck, the fuck, the fuck is on the shelves. The fuck, $20 will not sell. The fuck, I can't believe my eyes are loaded. Clearance aisle still doesn't compare. The fuck. Thank you, Susan Dolan. Ha <laughs> ha. The fuck, the fuck. They're selling this to kids. The fuck? Parents should flip their lids. The fuck? The shelves are lined with figures. Really crappy. Everybody is unhappy. Have I possibly gone daffy? This is fucked. The fuck? There are children buying these things instead of buying that. They're busy playing Reva and She-Hulk is molded facts. With Marvel in the front row and Star Wars in the back. And in my chest I feel tightness. Oh no, a heart attack. <coughs> oh look. The fuck? They're scooping up Miss Marvel? That shit. Why, that looks retarded. I'm tired. They're not realizing original glory, a culture that is expired. The fuck? The fuck? They are gathering bright and free, I fear. And who would ever think and why? They are ignoring their parents. Great things that got Captain Marvel flights and flings. There's a smile on everyone. So now correct me if I run. This looks so dumb. This looks so dumb. Who could it be the loony truck? The fuck? Oh my. What now? The children are asleep. But look, no heroes underneath, no Luke's, no Vader's here to choke and scare them, no Leia's, only neon pups secure inside their safe space. <laughs> the fuck? The Spocks are not logical and the Kirks cannot be found. And in the place there seems to be new Barbies all around. No Enterprise, I swear, all I see are lower decks. The stories of our moments past are measly little specks. 
the craps in mounds. They're everywhere and all around. I never felt so sick before. The stomach bile inside of me is building up. I simply want to throw it up. I'll throw it up. I'll up chuckle. I'll up chuckle on the floor. I'm throwing up. I'm throwing up. I've never been so sick before. What the fuck? <laughs> Uh, bargain bin. <laughs> Thank you, Susan Dolan, for your generous donation of another Shield agent who is now going to be awarded to DJ Close. Welcome to Shield. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Hopefully, you all are continuing to enjoy the music that we are providing for you this wonderful evening. Yes, I'm perfectly fine. A, a little hungrier now, <laughs> and I appreciate it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and bring out Gilbert Godfrey. But we will after these messages. Meet the Seattle Vigilante. Like so many comic heroes, this warrior hides his identity. But his identity isn't the only secret he has to keep. After grievous wounds received during combat, Tier 1 operator John Russell begins to recover and comes to terms with his new reality of being an amputee. And as he learns how to use his new prosthetic limb, he finds himself caught up in the bureaucratic red tape that too many wounded veterans experience, the exhausting med board process. Out of sheer frustration, John takes it out on the criminal scum of the city. But when reality kicks in, John realizes he started something that's having an impact on the greater world around him, and thus has to reevaluate his motives. And moreover, just how far is John willing to go to finish this war he's declared against the criminals in Seattle? And will he even survive? From the creator of IDW's award-winning graphic novel Code Word Geronimo comes a new story about a different kind of warrior, Vindicated Inc., the first of its kind disabled veteran action hero comic. The Vindicated Inc. graphic novel crowdfunding campaign on FundMyComic.com is provided in the description of this video. We hope you become a contributor. Please share this link. Thank you. Take out my Tchaikovsky tape. No matter, let's get started. Here we are, Nancy Moon. The last time we left our heroine, she had just joined my esteemed colleagues at level M. We have the soldier who can stop talking, a magician with money issues, and a vampire with a checkered past. But there are other teammates she's yet to meet. One in particular might be a little bit shocking for her. I do hope she's not allergic. Back it today, won't you? Like right now. I understand that somebody had to just wake my happy ass up. Can't a guy stay dead for 10 seconds? Well, Gilbert Gottfried, everybody, give him a round of applause. <laughs> I swear, I'm going to start leaving insects that are eating out my entrails all over your dinner. Oh, well, that's, um, that's kind of disgusting, um. I, I, I just threw up. Please, please, let's not go there. I think we're going there. But before I do, it has always been my most heartfelt dream that if I were to ever be disturbed from the land beyond, then I would have no choice but to attempt to demonetize your stream. Oh, please, we don't need to go there. We really don't need to go there. So I'm going to tell you about a few things that I have lined up. <laughs> no, no, please, God, no. From Fifty Shades of Grey, I feel like I consider myself an author now that I have an eternity to be able to write this stuff for you. Oh, oh no. And if it's anybody who can deliver it, it's yours truly. Or do I need to revisit Shrek is Love and Shrek is Life? No, not that. How about the aristocrats? No, not that either. No, please, God, no. <laughs> Ah, Richard Spake, I have just seen your chat, and your foolproof plan is now in motion. 
Now a wafer in the chat is already crying and peeing. Do you understand that I am like Negan and you're that poor fucker about to get hit in the head with a bat? Oh, what have I done? What have I done? It's now or never, Mr. Stark. It is time for me to read unto you my Vogon poetry. Oh my God. Son of a bitch. Guys, you're more than welcome to mute this section of the stream. My vibrator crater was traveling like an epileptic at a Pink Floyd concert. It was bliss having his batter blaster shoved inside me again. Stuffing my pink velvet sausage wallet with a number of chilies just doesn't get my sperm socket surging like it used to. I awoke the next morning with my municipal <laughs> cockwash still slobbering. I thought it was over, but his clunger had other ideas. He munched on my spam castanets. Even if I had on flow visiting for the best part of the week, hours of raiding like this would leave any girl's flappy meal like Brian May's plug hole. And I was no different. <laughs> the unrelenting orgasms from his cum tree slamming my ground zero crown made me come so hard. I began sweating like a dyslexic count on countdown. <laughs> With my lunch meat now like a shot cat, he thought it was time to start plugging my turd herder. It was time for me to tell him how really I need to extrude a foot-long fudge bullet. I wondered hours of hammering like this would leave any girl's meaty hangers hanging like a clown's pocket. And I was no different. By now I was clearing the woods, was slamming like Adele waiting for Greg's to open. Inserting an egg timer into my vibrator crater got me spraying flange custard faster. It's not off of a whip. I can't wait to consume the Da Vinci load <laughs> from his long dong silver. It was bliss having his sperminator slide inside me again. Stuffing my bearded haddock pasty with my fist just didn't get my meat purse ejecting like it's used to. Within no time, I could feel the shitty penis putting hammer and jig inside my oxo orifice all over my panty hamster. Some, <laughs> some girls are really happy just to flick the bean when they're alone. But I can't get off without having a Barbie doll in my Kemper dinghy and a 10-inch purple battery operating monster up my oxo orifice. He pinched off the corn-eyed butt snake on my breasticles just so he could gobble it up like a bulldog eating porridge. Oh my god, are you done? <laughs> uh, I do apologize, Nilla Wafer. People love the Gilbert Gottfried stuff. <laughs> I think we can get Gilbert to join the project to get people to stop using Click Esker in a negative way and replace it with Click. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yes, you did. Uh, yes, you did. Um, that that's what happens when Gilbert Gottfried is 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 uh, is disturbed, and you are disturbed. I am not disturbed. I am happily dead. Yes, he's done. Nilla Wafer, he's done. He's done. Go back to sleep. I'll see you Halloween, kitties, with more interesting stuff coming down the way. <laughs> Uh, Gilbert Gottfried. Yes, yes, you can. Yes. <laughs> I apologize, Nilla Wafer. Uh, people like the Gilbert. Um, I'll warn everybody next time. I do apologize, hon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Phantom Outsider makes a uh, good, good assessment with, uh, Eventually, you'll need to add a reprise to Woke Ass Connection where the fans gather to buy up all the abused IP at fire sale prices after Hollywood's bankruptcy. Yeah, it is going to have to be updated, isn't it? Good to see you, Noel Karras. Uh, hail to you, sir. Uh, just try not to send that many chats uh, through the line here. I don't want to get dingied. I might get dingied. I don't know yet. <laughs> but anyway, I believe we are now... Still at 665, baby. Holding strong, holding strong. Got one more, one more, one more, and then the radio demon will come out and uh, he will uh, provide more entertainment for you all. 
In the meantime, let's do a little palate cleanser with a serious song. How's that sound, folks? Sound good to you? Sounds great. Sounds great to me. Let's do a song that is serious. Let's do... Oh, no, no, no. Wait, we're doing, we're doing a transcript reading. Yes. Let's do a transcript reading. Let's do that one. And in fact, let's go ahead and do this one for Nilla Wafer. Uh, are you all familiar of the legend of the great Druidic warriors clad with antler-laden helmets led by a titan of a man standing at about seven feet tall with a six-foot-long bastard sword known only as the Head Knight, who says knee? Now, despite their martial prowess as being some of the best warriors in the forest uh, during the ancient times of the Knights of the Round, uh, the Knights who say Ni actually utilize their vocabulary as their main weapon of assault. And these particular individuals were, uh, were uh, you know, very, very capable of getting what they wanted, which in this particular uh, instance was some lawn care uh, that they didn't have to pay for in the form of a shrubbery. Uh, I will now uh, regale unto you this tale of the Knights who say Ni. For you all here. <clears throat> so here we go. Yeah, a shrubbery. Yes, yes. The knights who say knee. Knee! 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 Who are you? We are the knights who say knee! No, not the knights who say knee. The same! Who are they? We are the keepers of the sacred words. Knee! Pen! And knew them, knew them. Those who hear them seldom live to tell the tale. The knights who say ni demand a sacrifice. Knights of ni, we are but simple travelers who seek the enchanter who lives beyond these woods. Ni, 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 We shall say ni again to you if you do not appease us. What is it that you want? We want a shrubbery. A what? Ni, ni, Please, no more. We shall find a shrubbery. You must return here with a shrubbery or else you will not pass through this wood alive. Oh, Knights of Knee, you are just and fair. We will turn with a shrubbery. But that looks nice, of course. And not too expensive. Yes. Now, go! Old crone, is there anywhere in this town that we could buy a shrubbery? Da -da! Who sent you? The knights who say me. Ha! No, never! There are no shrubberies here. If you do not tell us where well, we can buy a shrubbery, my friend, and I will say, we will say, me. Ha! Ah, do your worst. Very well, if you'll not assist us voluntarily. Me. No, never. No shrubberies. Me. No, no. No, 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 no. That's not that. It's me. No, 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 me. No, no. Doing it properly. No, knee. That's it. That's it. You've got it. Knee, knee. Are, are you saying knee to that old woman? Um, yes. Oh, what sad times are these when passing ruffians can say knee to will to old ladies. There's a pestilence upon this land. Nothing is sacred. Even those who arrange, design shrubberies are under considerable economic stress in this period of history. Did you say shrubberies? Yes, shrubberies are my trade. I am a shrubber. My name is Roger the Shrubber. I arrange, design, and sell shrubberies. Knee! No, 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 stop, stop, no. Oh, Knights of Knee, we have brought you your shrubbery. May we go now? It is a good shrubbery. I like the laurels particularly, but there is one small problem. What is that? We are now no longer the Knights who say Knee. Knee. We are now the Knights who say Kang Zabong. Therefore, we must give you a test. What is this test, oh, knights? Knights who till recently said knee. First, you must find another shrubbery. That's another shrubbery. Then when you have found the shrubbery, you must place it here beside this shrubbery. Only slightly higher, so you get a too little effect with a path running down the middle. A path, a path, knee. Then when you have found the shrubbery, you must cut down the mightiest tree of this whole forest. With a herring! Dinner. We will do no such thing. Oh, please. 
Cut down a tree with a herring. It can't be done. <laughs> Don't say that word. What word? I cannot tell. Suffice it's one of the words the knights of the cannot hear. How can we not know what the word is if you don't tell us what it is? Ah! <laughs> what is? No, no, that is. We couldn't get very far in life, that saying is. My liege, it's Sir Robin. Packing it in and packing it up and sneaking away and buggering up and chickening out and pissing about. Yes, he's bravely thrown in the sponge. Oh, Robin, my liege, it's good to see you. Ah! <laughs> he said the word. Surely you're not giving up your quest for the Holy Grail. He is sneaking away and buggering up. Shut up. No, no, no. Far from it. He said the word again. <laughs> I was looking for it. <laughs> Here in this forest. It's not far from. Ah! I stop saying the word. Oh, stop it. <laughs> he said it again, Patsy. <laughs> oh, no. I'm saying it. <laughs> and there you go, Nilla Wafer. Hopefully. Hopefully, uh, that has paid you back in kind for your entertainment, as I intend to entertain all. Um, so, yes, yes, far from it. Bravely bold, Sir Robin. <laughs> I need to learn that whole song. They are scared of the word it. Ah! <laughs> that's right, that's right. Well, let's see where we are now. We are at the perfect evil, ladies and gentlemen. The perfect evil. That means we are now at this. I have to. I have to move quickly. Quickly now. We have achieved it. Six hundred and sixty-six subscribers tonight. And I must now do what must be done. So give me one moment, as I say. After these messages. We'll be right back. What's this unsightly blemish? Oh, rust. When you're a machine in an organic environment, rust happens. But it doesn't have to happen to you. Now there's rust away. Simply have your fix-it crab rub this gel on the infected areas. You'll have relief not in months or days, but hours. Soon the atmosphere will be a thing of the past. Until then, there's rust away. Ask for it by name at your replicating unit. Who is this who enters unannounced? You know damn well who. I am Fett. For hire. By the legendary Fett for hire. For thousands of years, Americans have looked for answers to life's difficult questions. Now, millions of people just like you are finding answers and taking charge of their lives through the original patented and proven program of Valhalla's finest deity, Thor. Treasure awaits you, but beware of your women, folk. Treachery is deep within her. By the coming of the spring, she shall be no more. Thor changed my life! Author of two best-selling self-help books translated from the original runic into 25 languages, Thor has helped millions realize their dreams. Beware the trap set by the Frost Giant. Carry your magic hammer. Available on record or cassette, the personal Norse power program looks to the myths of the Vikings for answers. Can you give my husband and I some advice to help keep things hot in the bedroom? Take a longboat and 20 of your finest men. Head to where the sun sets. There you will find a village. Pillage, plunder, and burn all that you find. And if you order now, you'll receive Thor's subliminal tape series, so you gain wisdom of the gods while sleeping. Accept the crystal cup. At the feast, beware the dwarf. Thor's personal Norse power program. Call now. 866-PILLAGE. That's 866-PILLAGE. The Admiral says they're communicating with every ship to make sure they have the proper equipment and the sailors are trained in case something like this happens again. On ABC 10 News at 5, the Admiral shares some of the stories of heroism that he heard about after meeting with those sailors. 
man. Don't bullshit me. Spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. Hey there, everybody. It's your buddy, Admiral Teague. Hit those like and follow buttons for my pal, Tony Sark, and check out my show, Saving Star Trek, Fridays at 6 p.m. and Sundays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time. It's your good friend, uh, Amistad, Radio Demon, broadcasting to you from Pentagram City, and I heard that somebody up topside got themselves a perfect evil. Let's give them a round of applause. A perfect evil. <laughs> Magnificent. Why, hello, Nilla Wafer. Hopefully your days are treating you well. Yes. So am I coming in loud and clear? Testing, testing. One, two. Sound like I am loud and clear. We're in the fight five by five. Absolutely excellent. All right. Hello, Tanilla Wafer. It is indeed your friend, Alistair the Radio Demon. And I'm now here to sing you some show tunes. And then we're going to get to a segment about uh, the eclipse. I understand that the eclipse had happened just recently. And Mr. Stark had also obtained himself well, he repaired my staff. Isn't he such a dear? Now I can make sure that I can eat his soul later. Aww. So endearing. I love him to death. It's absolutely amazing that he was able to do it. Echoey, but all good. Am I echoing now? Testing, testing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why, hello there. Echoey, but good. Allow me to double check. Uh, one moment. Uh, just a moment. All right, better, better. Magnificent. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and introduce myself to those of you who are new here. We have 42 individuals listening in, and you guys are absolutely amazing for getting Mr. Stark this far. We appreciate you on this Subscriber Drive Special Edition of Stark's Tuesday Matinee, and we hope that we will see you again real soon. But in the meantime, more reverb than an echo? Well... I presumed it was part of the shtick. Well, uh, that depends. Uh, if it is echoey, I do apologize. I don't want to sound too... But uh, the, the thing is, is it's a, it's a, it's a radio filter. 
Testing, testing. One, two. My mic sounds nice. One, two. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Well, whatever. Moving on. Here's my introduction. We'll look through it in post later. Mr. Stark, get better equipment. Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying. <clears throat> Hello, it's nice to meet you. And can you tell me where I am? I don't know how I got here, but I'm starting to understand. I don't belong among the angels, and maybe that's just fine with me. The things I did up there were high school, but now I'm going for my degree. Hey, sorry, but you just got in my way. I promise, honey, I can feel your pain, and maybe I enjoy it just a little bit. Does that make me insane? Haven't been the same since I expired. Doesn't mean I plan on to retire, and now I have the power to rid all of you in entertaining fa da 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 I want you an old pal of mine. Departed from us far too early, but we are meeting a second time. We used to have so much fun together, and you may have just what I need. But I have just a simple question. Tell me, do you demons bleed? <laughs> Hmm, hey, sorry, but you just got in my way. I promise, honey, I can feel your pain. And maybe I enjoy it just a little bit. Does that make me insane? Haven't been the same since I expired. That doesn't mean I plan to retire. And now I have the power to rid all of you in entertaining fun. Considering how deep a hole Alistar is in, it's amazing he can be heard all over the wailing and gnashing of teeth that goes on down there. Well, of course, you see, that's what happens outside the window. Would you like for me to open it? Hey, sorry that you got in my way. I realize I can feel your pain, and maybe I enjoy it just a little bit. Does that make me insane? I haven't been the same since I expired, but does it mean that I plan to retire? And I have the power to rid all of you in entertaining fire. There we are. No, I presume that was part of the stick. Yes, I was a better explanation than mine. You could say so. You could say so. <clears throat> now, of course, this wouldn't be an Alistair segment of music if I didn't sing a couple of more tunes for you all. So let's go ahead and sing a few of these that I wrote just for you. Let's start by covering Jeepers Creepers. Now, this goes out to my good friend Rosie in the Cannibal Town segment of Pentagram City. You know who you are, and you still, to this day, have delectable tastes. Aww. So let's go ahead and get right to it, shall we? <clears throat> oh, now I don't care what the weatherman says when the weatherman says it's raining. You'll never hear me complaining. I'm certain the sun will shine. I don't care how the weather rain points when the weather rain points to gloomy. It's gotta be sunny to me when your eyes look into mine. Oh, jeepers, a creepers, where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers, creepers, where'd you get those eyes? Oh, gosh, I'll get up. How'd they get so lit up? Oh gosh, I'll get up. How'd they get that size? Oh golly gee! When you turn those heaters on, oh woe is me. Got to get my cheaters on. Oh jeepers, a creepers. Where'd you get those peepers? Jeepers, creepers. Where'd you get those eyes? How they hypnotize. 
I want to eat those eyes. Oh, jeepers, creepers. I will eat those peepers. Deepers, creepers. I will pluck those eyes. Gosh, I'll get up. Easily I'll fill up. Oh, gosh, I'll get up. Tasty and bite size. Oh, golly gee. When you get your staring on, oh, woe is me. I got to get my gourmet on. Oh, jeepers, creepers. I will eat those peepers, seepers, creepers, tasty and bite size. Oh, just all a get up, easily I'll fill up. Gosh, I'll get up, past the sauce, realize I will eat your eyes. <laughs> no, excuse me, now I'm hungry. One of our stars go to is I don't want to set the world on fire. He would if he has to, or if it doesn't, just don't give him any combustibles. Well, you see, about that. Hate to do this, but I am insanely busy. Got to run. I hope to catch you again soon. As well as you should, Alabama Hellbilly. We will be here uh, well into the evening tonight. This is a full-length matinee, and Mr. Stark will be broadcasting to round 12 or 1. So we are just getting started, my good man. Just getting started. Now, I had somebody request that they want to set the world on fire. Now, of course, I'm the kind of individual that will do that for you. So let's go ahead and do that for you. This little ditty is by the Ink Spots. I think you all know where we're going with this one. Because at the end of the day, Fallout is coming out, my good fellow. Fallout is coming out a couple of days early. That's pretty interesting news coming from Topside. But yes, here we are. <clears throat> I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in your heart. In my heart I have but one desire. That someone is you, no other will do. I've lost all ambition for worldly acclaim. I just want to be the one you love. And with your admission that you feel the same, I'll have reached the goal I'm dreaming of. Believe me! <laughs> I don't want to set the world on a fire. I just want to start a flame in your heart. Why, hello. <laughs> I don't want to set the world on fire, honey. I love you too much. And when you get in love this much. Well, let's just say I like to take things to the next level. You see, now that your heart's before me, it's the only thing that I could ever possibly desire. But you're going to have to pass the Tabasco sauce, my dear, because no other flavor will do. I've lost all ambition of worldly acclaim. I just want to be the one you love. And with your ambition that you feel the same, I'll have dreamed the goal of dreaming of, believe me. You screwed up. <laughs> Shut up, you! I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in your heart. <laughs> I'm surprised Alistar is crowing about how he made deals with the unwary, that he'd bring them back if they made a deal with him. What do you see? Those particular individuals belong to me. Anybody who takes and makes a deal with yours truly, let's just say, I like to.
to make sure that they get their voices heard. Just come down here, my good fellow, if you want to hear them. <laughs> I dare not broadcast that part of the show. That would just be hellish, wouldn't you say so? Oh no, here we go. We wouldn't want anybody to feel like they're damned if they do and damned if they don't. You got him going. Great job. Sometimes I feel like there is more perdition and punishment than we have with these particular jokes this fine evening. No. That was kind of a reach. The only thing that you're reaching is up here to give me a high five. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, it has begun. It is time for the dad joke segment. You see, as an individual that I know of that has quite a many a row of corn. And it isn't the only row of corn, you see. So before we get to the dad joke segment, I'll go ahead and I shall bring unto you the uh, sponsor of tonight's dad joke segment. For you all today. And so, we, uh, what have I told you? That we do have restaurants down here. Yes? Wouldn't you say so? And I've got this particular individual. You could say that uh, there is a form of food here. I think you guys will love. So let's go ahead and see. If I can find our sponsor, why in the bloody hell? Uh, let's see here. All right. Let's see here. Let's see if we can find it. Wow, that one's even worse. You know what I hate about the internet? Let me tell you what I hate about the internet. The internet's always so just like this. Slow! I just want to find the quote. Uh, it's unfortunate. If only I actually remembered the quote. You know what? This is getting ridiculous. I think I just found it. What the heck? All I had to do was this. All right, all right, all right. I think I found it. Ahem. So this has been brought to you by uh, our sub-subway chain of restaurants, who have brought onto you the most infernal sub known imaginable, the Brood Witch. It is the Brood Witch, forged in darkness from wheat harvested in hell's half acre, baked by Beelzebub, slathered with mayonnaise, beaten from the evil eggs of a dark chicken, forced into sauce by the hands of a one-eyed madman. Cheese boiled from the rancid meat of a fanged cow, layered with 666 separate meats from an animal which has... Maggots for blood, Dijon mustard, and of course, you can't forget the sun-dried tomatoes. That's right. If you want the best sandwich this side of Punishment and Paradise Lost, look no further than the Brood Witch. And now we shall go ahead and we shall get to our program. Why was it such hell to find that? I'll never know. Let me guess, demons eat soul food. Well, that's a good one. So let's go ahead and actually run that particular uh, joke through the ringer. What do you say, Mr. Stock? <clears throat> I guess. So what kind of food do demons eat? I don't know what. They eat soul food. <laughs> Seems pretty good by my ear. We're taking that one. What kind of music do demons listen to? Oh, let me guess. Soul music? You're correct! You're not even trying. I don't need to try. Yes, the sun-dried tomato are a hellish creation. Absolutely. Have you ever had sun-dried tomatoes? They're deplorable. At least whenever you come down to some subway and give them a try. But I understand that there was an eclipse today. Oh, no. Don't tell me. Oh, yes, my good fellow. We have so many jokes about the eclipse. I'm sorry in advance, guys. Go ahead and start planting all cornrows because it's time for the dad jokes about the eclipse. 
Nossa! <laughs> All right. All right. Go ahead. Humor us or torture us or whatever it is you do. Oh, believe me, my good man, it's torture. <laughs> What is the most famous painting of an eclipse? I don't know what. The Mona Lisa! Oh my god, really? What did the sun bring to the solar eclipse party? Uh, I don't know what. Uh. A light snack! Oh god. How does the man in the moon cut his hair? He clips it! Oh, no, no. What did the sun say when it reappeared after eclipse? I don't know what. It's pleased to hit you again! Oh my god, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. What kind of underwear should you wear during an eclipse? Oh, no, really, we're going there? Fruit of the moon! <laughs> Okay, that's pretty good. All right, we'll give you that one. We'll give you that one. We'll give you that one. How do you organize a solar eclipse party? I don't know. Is it similar to how astronauts organize a party? Absolutely, you plan it. But wouldn't that just be moonlighting off of another joke? There you are. That's the spirit. Well done, sir. Well, no, you see, it's cratered either way. Uh, are we going to orbit around this the whole time? <laughs> well, no, see, because we have to keep moving, or else we won't have light on it anymore. Oh, my God. Why didn't the sun go to college? I, I don't know. It already had a million degrees. Uh... <laughs> Have you heard about the restaurant on the moon? Is it better than Sub Subway? It's great food, but it has no atmosphere. Let me guess, they serve cheese up there. How'd you guess? <laughs> well, I don't know. I just don't know. Why did the teacher bring solar eclipse glasses to school? Um, to make sure that kids don't burn out their eyes? Well, funny, no. It's because she had bright students. Uh, 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 no, in the, the chat says two drums and a cymbal fall off a cliff. That was very, very delayed. Well, I had to bring dramatic tension. Really? Well, they had to fall through with a joke. The impact, though, was quite funny. Of course, we're going to need a new drummer. Oh, will you make him stop? Somebody throw him money to make him stop. See, Susan Dolan in the chat says, It didn't get dark here, but the gal at Casey said that the store inside lights did turn on and the sky did turn an interesting color. Well, that was a partial eclipse. Yes. Yeah. Yellow Afer says, all I saw during the eclipse were clouds. Unfortunate. It was a beautiful phenomenon. You will not be able to see one again in the continental United States until 24, 24, 24. In the year 24, 24. Another joke I implore. It best be then before you will find. <laughs> Thank you, Alistair. Thank you so much. And... Yes, stop, stop, yes, please. No, don't stop. No, don't, no, no, tell him to stop. No, no. Oh, you want more? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I suppose we are coming to the part of the program where we go ahead and we wish uh, the bulk of our viewers a fun farewell. It seems that they have moved on to other pastures. Meaning other shows are happening, which is perfectly fine. We appreciate uh, each and every one of them who had hung out with us for the duration. 
and we thank everybody for reaching 670 subscribers this wonderful evening. Thank you all so much for choosing Stock of Iron. We're going to sing one more song, and then we'll give the show back to him. Does that sound good for you? And congratulations on getting the perfect evil. Uh, Ensign Rusher, uh, you want to read this one, Al, before you get started? Absolutely. I'm glad I saw 666. Had to meet up with my group for a project. Brats, Tony, keep doing you and keep your show how you want it. You, Pacific 414, Appion and Rocco, and CRC have had such an amazing year to 1,000. Well, with that, I do need we... Yes, thank you, sir. Very encouraging work. Thank you. Oh. Thank you so much. And now, we will go ahead and we will sing one more song and then pass it back off to Mr. Stock. Does that sound good for you? Yes, I think I think that you've tormented these fine folks enough. Ah, you mean entertain these fine folks enough. So I'm going to sing this particular one a cappella for you all. This is a song that I like to give a shout out to our good friends over there at V Tower in Pentagram City. Uh, this one's called Radio Kill, the video star. And it goes a little bit like this. They heard me on the radio in 33, hiding in fear intent of tuning in on me. If they were lords, it didn't stop the killing spree. Oh, ho! Then the new guy rock shacked up with the other Vs, rewriting media with new technology. I'm not, I understand the problems you can see. Oh, ho! I met Miss Charlie, ho, ho. I told her plainly, radio kill the video star. Radio kill the video star. Pictures came but didn't start. Oh, ho, 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 ho. But now I rebuild an abundant studio. You hear the broadcast like the one so long ago. And you remember the screaming used to go, oh ho, I killed the first one, oh ho, I'll kill the last one, radio kill the video star, radio kill the video star, my hotel show is on the air, and we are broadcast from my office chair, oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and yes, we cannot forget all of the individuals over there at Vox and his employ. I, of course, am speaking about Valentino, his lover boy, and his British little hound dog, too. Yes, Aww. talking about you, Velvet. <laughs> my hotel show is on the air. We are broadcast from my office chair. Pictures fail to even start DVD or VCR. <laughs> Radio kill the video star. 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 <laughs> Alistair killed the Volks and V-Stars. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, shit, I just got an idea for your contest. Well, by all means, uh, shoot it my way, my good fellow, or shoot it his way. Well, this is going to end my segment of the broadcast tonight. And again, I will also have a, a purely hosted show after Pop Culture Breakdown because we achieved that perfect evil if everybody would give me one more round of applause. Yes. So after Pop Culture Breakdown tomorrow night, I will be back on the air.
Yes. Uh, do you want one more? One more. An encore. Seems like we want an encore. Nail a wafer just for you. I will do one more for you. How's that sound? An encore, as it were. I think I know just the one. But only one more, I promise. Hey, hobo man. Hey, dapper Dan. You both have your style, but you're never fully dressed without a smile. Your clothes may be Beau Brummelly, they stick out a mile, but brother, you're never fully dressed without a smile. Who cares what you're wearing on Main Street or Savile Row? It's what you wear from ear to ear, and not from head to toe that matters. So, Senator, so, Janitor, so long for a while, you know you're never fully dressed without a smile. I don't want to set the world on a fire. I just want to cook and flambe your heart. In my mouth I have but one desire. That desire is you. You'll say to me it's true. I've lost all ambition. For non-living food, I just want to consume up your flesh. Without your admission, you know that it's true. I believe that you will taste the best. Believe me. <clears throat> I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a meal with your heart. <laughs> there you go. I'll catch you for dinner. This segment was brought to you by the Nuka Cola Corporation and Great Tortoise Cigarettes. Don't fuck with Nuka Cola. After these messages, we'll be right back. I'd like to build a world and you can't furnish it with love. Grow mushroom trees and atomic bees and quantum. Are you bored? Do you find yourself with nothing to do, wondering what can add some excitement to your life? Well, have you considered models? And we're not talking about any old models, no sir. We're talking about awesome models. 
not these models, or these. No, we're talking about science, science fiction, fiction models. models. That's right. You heard correctly. Science fiction models. You know, the plastic kind that snap or glue together. Things like Star Trek, Star Wars, Transformers, Back to the Future, UFO stuff, more Star Trek, more Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, both kinds. Well, if you like those things, come on over to the Sci-Fi Model Guy. Just point your internet browser to https colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash ampersand the sci-fi model guy and not only will you be able to see cool models being made but you get to hear this guy explain all about them you have nothing to lose and so much to gain so come on over and let's get modeling Come on to the Sci-Fi Model Guy today! So much to gain varies by user. Critics agree there is only one human movie that can be considered a masterpiece. Robocop. And now it's available on EEPROM. Download your copy at a replicator near you. Relive the excitement and glory of a human being transformed into a glorious, gleaming, killing machine. Act now and receive at no extra charge. Dozers and dump trucks. A fond look back at our primitive ancestors. Robocop. Dozers and dump trucks. Two great programs, one low price. Make them a permanent part of your hard drive today. And we are back to the regular program. Uh, that was Alice's story, everybody, and I hope that you all enjoyed that segment. <clears throat> we are going to recenter my voice again now that I have to do an Alice store uh, hosted show, or, or let him do it actually, uh, after Pop Culture Breakdown. Or tomorrow night, it's. Uh, only right that uh, we we refined our vocal center and uh because i do have that and then one more matinee on thursday before the one on saturday so we need to uh pace ourselves a little bit i think so let's refine our center and yes let us talk about fallout yes i have a bad feeling about this as often was coined by uh han solo or luke skywalker or whichever one in the in the death star compactor i think they both had a bad feeling about this uh the the, the issue is is of course they're airing it early and i think it you know it's just like with amazon watching youtubers just like with disney you know it's like it's like they know they know that we're here talking about it we're here lamenting what could very well be just another uh, swing and a miss as far as pop culture is concerned. And that's a problem. <laughs> that's a big problem, guys. Uh, and like I said, um, if I can get the funds on my mega chats, I do not mind to do an after party, pull up Amazon Prime, and, and let you guys watch at least one episode so that I can... But I would have to be able to pay for uh the cost of that because i do use a hotspot so i gotta be very careful since i have such a a streaming and upload schedule and i can't i can't really miss it so give me one second to see if there's any mega chats that need to be checked over at the paypal because i do i do have my phone silenced uh because it was going off the hook Okay, there are none. No big deal. If that doesn't happen tonight, that's fine. Snail Messiah and Rocco, if you ain't doing anything Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern, you can hop on with us too. Uh, and we're going to be reviewing it. <laughs> Probably episodically on Sunday uh, for Reactor Side Chats Fallout. Um I feel like they just wanted to get it out there so that we didn't have the opportunity to really rake in the views from what could very well be a bad show. It's it's not a good sign. It's not good form for them to do that. So I'm going to regale to uh, the glory days of Fallout. And uh, I'm going to sing this little ditty. I'm going to refine my vocal center. And we're going to go back to the good days. And, uh, you know... Not while it's not the master of Frank Oregon, good days, good days. 
<clears throat> this little tune goes a little bit like this. I have sung a lot of crooner tunes tonight, but I really need to. I did a lot of high pitched voices, and I can tell there's a little fog in my throat. So I probably won't be saying much besides what I do have planned for Pop Culture Breakdown tomorrow. So I need to give my voice a bit of a rest, especially with Alice Thor coming on directly thereafter. Uh, so, with that stated, <clears throat> let's do this. This is a little uh, Orange Colored Sky by Nat King Cole. I was walking along, minding my business, when out of an orange colored sky, flash, bam, alakazam, wonderful you came by. I was humming a tune, drinking in sunshine, when out of that orange colored view, flash, bam, alakazam. I gotta look at you. One look and I yelp, Timber. Watch out for flying glass. Cause the ceiling fell in and the bottom fell out and I went into spin and I started a shot. I've been hit. This is it. This is it. He's been hit. I was walking along, minding my business. But love came and hit me in the eye. Flash, bam, alakazam, out of an orange colored sky. One look and I yelled, Timber, watch out for flying glass. Cause the ceiling fell in and the bottom fell out and I went in a spin and I started a shot. I've been hit. This is it. This is it. I've been hit. I was walking along, minding my business. When love came and hit me in the eye, flash, bam, alakazam, out of an orange colored purple stripe, pretty green polka dot sky, flash, bam, alakazam, and goodbye. Wow, I thought love was so much softer than that. What a most disturbing sound. Yes. Phantom Outsider goes on to say, they never learn another video game, uh, yeah, another video game-based movie, because Battleship works so well. What's next? Monopoly? <laughs> First 30 minutes of the movie is people fighting over the car. Yeah, no kidding. I was always a top hat. Hey now, Phantom Boomer, I love Battleship. Brought back the Navy uh, and, and the memories. My time in the Navy, it had th no, you're tempting me. I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you what, I will do one, I will do one stanza of Brian Johnson, okay? I have a Brian Johnson impersonation. I don't know if you guys know this. <laughs> <clears throat> this is probably going to pop my voice like a, like bubble wrap, but you know what? If you like Thunderstruck that much, Richard Spake, you did become a defender today, and I have yet to entertain you, and I, I have to rectify that. If somebody becomes... Somebody becomes a member of your channel. You got to do something about it. You know what I'm saying? So. <clears throat> uh, I was couch in the middle of the railroad track. On the ground. And I knew there was no turning back. My mind raced. And I thought, what could I do? And I knew there was no help, no help from you. Sound off the guns. Beating in your heart. The thunder of guns, yeah. Tear me apart. You've been thunderstruck. There you go. There you go. There you go. I'm not going to do any more. I have to preserve my voice. <laughs> Hail to Eugene Bird. I, I, th there you go. There's my uh, there's my Brian Johnson for you, and I hope that it passed its muster. It did for Eugene Bird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thunderstruck. Uh -huh. <coughs> <coughs> got to be careful. I got a lot of broadcasting these next couple of days. <laughs> 
got the got the matinee tonight. I got the matinee Thursday. I got PCB, and I got Alice Thor's radio program that night after PCB. I'm gonna have no voice for Friday and Saturday. That's perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> I'm glad that you enjoyed that. UG Bird sent a $4.99 super sticker of a pair dropping that mic. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. I'm surprised. I haven't seen a super pair in a while. I am going to write that into a full parody of the uh, Christopher Reeves uh, parody where uh, DC sings the underdog theme. Uh, I feel like that would be bad to to sing the uh, the under the. Uh, underdog theme oh three hours so this is this is this is just the uh, icing of the cake eugene bird uh i'm going to be uh on for at least at least an hour and a half to two more tonight then i will be on uh pop culture breakdown tomorrow with dc and the gang then i will have alistair broadcast for about an hour and a half to three hours afterwards and then I'm doing another matinee, just like this one Thursday, starting at the same time at 7.30 Central. And then I am doing the after Friday Night Frolics Party uh, Saturday with the song contest, with the parody song contest. So I have a full schedule. It's because I I'm furloughed for a week from work. I, I got I to hustle. Got to make sure I'm not eating ramen next week. You know what I mean? The week after. So I'm putting in my overtime for YouTube tonight. And I appreciate everybody with hanging out with me. Uh, in the early, we had, we had I think, up to like 50 people at one point. And I've gained a lot of subscribers tonight, too. We went from 632 to 600. And at this current juncture, 672. We have made 40 new subscribers tonight. And then of which Richard Spake became a middle tier member. Susan Dolan gifted a basic tier member. Admiral T gifted five new members. As PJ says, we do indeed grow together. And I, I firmly believe that. Always stick to your mission statements. Best advice that I can give is always stick to your mission statements. When you make a channel, you make it for a specific reason. My reason is to keep the party going. So if you guys will let me be a little emotional, a little sappy with you all, uh, if you would indulge me. Uh, I used to have parties in this little hole-in-the-wall joint I've lived in. I've lived in the same place for 20 years. And, you know, I used to host parties. I was a bartender. I was the entertainment and the bouncer. Occasionally, I was the bouncer. Big old country boy that, uh, you know, can sing high notes, but can pick somebody up by their head and toss them like, like a giant throwing a gnome, you know, or like the trolls in Skyrim, how they swat. I can do downward swats to people shorter than me like that. I'm, I can do downward swats. I'm, I, <laughs> I look like an albino Sasquatch, as I've been told. But I used to bartend for my parties. I used to always keep a stocked bar. I used to, because I live next to a college, not to dox myself too much. I live next to a college, and a lot of the college kids come down here because I, you know, I would throw them free alcohol and stuff. I didn't care. Or at, you know, budgeted shots, I'd be like $3 a shot instead of like, you know, $7 or $8 a shot just to pay for whatever liquor bottle that I had purchased that night. And I used to sing songs, do cartoon voices. And uh, DM games and play Magic the Gathering, play poker. You know, used to just be the gaming party central area. My, I was the, I was the happening hop of this town, and everybody knows me as Mister Stark in this town. That Tony Starkisms is actually coming from that instance. That's where the kept the party going. Well, it was one night, <clears throat> and uh, you know, I was basically going. Well, I was talking like like good old uh, Hank Hill and uh, said some stuff. And then the YouTube auto DJ put on Friday Night Frolics. And I didn't know who DC was at this time. I didn't know who he was. But 
there he was talking like Hank Hill. And so my guests thought that that was me fucking with the phone. Which I would pull pranks all the time, you know. You know, pull out a walkie-talkie, put it in the kitchen. I'd wait for people to go in there to grab another beer without me, you out notifying me and be like, "What the hell are you doing? Get the hell away from there!" You know, like you know, stuff like that. So they thought I was fucking with the phone. Hail to Sci-Fi Mommy! It's good to see you. So you know, my friends were like, "Oh my god, he's doing cartoon voices. He's singing songs. That's what you do." You should do this. And I'm like, nah, 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 nah. But, you know, shout out to my friend Chubby Cakes. Uh, shout out to my friend Vinny. You know, they kept twisting my arm and twisting my arm. And I said, you know, that, the, you know, we're not getting any younger. And, you know, people have started to, you know, get lives, start families. You know, most of the people that I used to, you know, pour old fashions for are now you know, they got their second kid, you know, and like, I'm just like over here still in my little hole in the wall joint wanting, wanting to party. Cause that's what I want to do. I want to party. I want to, I just want to be around people and have fun. That's always been my mission statement. And so finally I said, you know what? Fuck it. You've twisted my arm long enough. And so I met this guy named Cardinal sin and Cardinal Sin is what got me to, to do these, uh, you know, these matinees, these uh, very variety show esque matinees. It was it was him who told me to do it. I was inspired by Doomcock. Don't get me wrong, and Doomcock is the foundation for my muse. But Gil was the one that gave me the swift kick in the ass to get it done. Gil was the one that said. Nut up or shut up, get it done. And I own that. And uh, I and and I basically I sung I sung Lock Lomond to him. Now that's something that I often super chat during Friday Night Frolics is Lock Lomond because uh, DC does a, a wonderful rendition of it. Lock Lomond for me is very sentimental. It's a song that I dedicate to my ex. It is a song that has now become synonymous with loss simply because that was the song that Cardinal Sin said, okay, you have to do this when I performed it for him. It was on a midnight to midnight. And I challenge you tonight, for those of you that are up late at night, tonight, to find the midnight to midnight where I performed that for him. It's there on his channel. And thank you, Eugene Byrne. Thank you. I keep it up. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, and so, you know, I'm going to keep the party going, if not just for Gil, but for all of you fine folks here. That's the reason why the matinee has become the successful second stage. I like to consider it. I like to consider it the. Uh, how can I put this? The second stage. Yes. Like DC, it's like it's like a musical festival. DC does the big show, the main stage, and then for those of you guys that don't want to go to bed, there I am, and that's what the the matinee has become that role. And I've always been a fan of the golden age of radio. That's why characters like Alastor speak out to me, and TV Land, which is why you know comedians like Johnny Carson speak out to me. And that's what happened with the Tower After Hours. The Tower After Hours is basically a late show that follows that program. Originally, I thought it was just going to be just us guys sitting out on the porch talking about stuff specific for Rumble because YouTube was becoming very much a chokeholder in the the spheres of creators and, and, and their silencing campaigns have become more and more well noted. But... It then evolved into just a community-centered project. You know, I, I see it on big streams all the time. I'll hear them go, plug your show, plug your show. I've been on big streams and small streams. They say, plug your show. As somebody who's listened to, you know, Howard Stern, you know, I can tell you that, you know, giving yourself a plug is not enough when it comes to advertising. So when I sat down and I started doing the outline for the tower after hours, I said, okay, how do we do this? 
everybody will skip ads that they don't want to watch on YouTube, but they'll watch ads of their favorite creators. And I feel like because now that we're getting these waves of new people in, there's no better time to spread the love and do commercials for everybody. You know? Yeah, yeah, th that's the perfect way to describe it. Perfect way to describe it. Well, you following DC is like Letterman following Carson or SCTV following original cast SNL. Absolutely. I like to be the late, late show. The late, late show isn't going to get as many ratings as the late show. It isn't going to. But it is going to keep people happy that don't know or don't want to go to bed. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect analogy, Phantom Outsider. It'll sir. Uh, Thanks a million. And whenever I say thanks a million, uh, I like I like to symbolize that with a little clip. So thanks a million, sir. I know you have been inconvenienced, and I'm prepared to compensate you. Shall we say one million American dollars? Very well then, two million. You know what's funny though is like a lot of the people in my backstage parties never heard of Vader sessions, and I'm like, oh, you poor uncultured child. <laughs> but yes, thanks a million. Let's go ahead and sing another song, and I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sing Lock Lamont since I, I've gotten to talking about it. And this goes out to our good friend Cardinal Sin. We'll sing a few of these uh, ballads. We'll do a in triplicate of some uh, Scottish and uh, Gaelic and Irish ballads. How's that sound? Let's get a little sappy before we bring her back around and make everybody happy again, because I don't like going back and forth too much. <clears throat> so this goes out, and I hope that it's like one of my biggest bucket lists is not only to duet with DC, but to also perform this for him. He has performed this to me on many, many notions, uh, including the uh, time whenever I was very much deep in the bottle. And when I say deep in the bottle, I was knee deep in the bottle, the deep end of the pool uh, of alcoholism. And he and, you know, Admiral T even, you know, and Cardinal Sin, everybody pulled me out of that deep end. They pulled me out of that deep end and 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 said, what's the matter with you? Get your shit together. Same for, you know, Gary Ambrosia, Ranker Steve, same thing. What's the matter with you? Get your head together. Mm-hmm. Did anyone clip and re-upload Cardinal Sin's story readings from various DC streams? Uh we don't need to because Cardinal Sin's channel is now part of the YouTube archive. It is solidified itself as and you can go and you can play any of his videos. And shout out to um, shout out to Ari as well for for taking. I know that's a lot a big big load for one to bear to keep the legacy of Gil alive. Uh, shout out to you, sir. You are also very, very awesome. So this song also goes out to you. <clears throat> so, where were we? Lock Lomond. By yon bonny banks and by yon bonny braes Where the sun shines bright on the Lohman, where me and me true love were ever won to gay. On the bonny, bonny banks, so the Lohman, I'll take the high road, and I'll take the low road. Now to be in Scotland afar ye. But me and me true love will never meet again on the bonny, bonny banks, so lullaby man. Twas there that we parted in yon shady glen on the steep, steep side of Ben Lohman, where in a purple hue. 
the Highland Hills we view, and the moon coming out in the glory, man. Ar i tak the high road, and I'll tak the low road. I'll be on Scotland afar ye, but me and me true love will never meet again on the bonny, bonny banks so loy, man. Twas there that we parted in yon shady glen, and I suppose we'll do this stanza for second. How did I misread this? I've done it worse than this, but I suppose another lyric for my fine folks. They're waiting on the high road. I'll meet them at low road. We'll reach Scotland together. This is how you do a save whenever you have failed. And I know that everyone is a laughing. The wee birds sing and the wild flowers spring. And in sunshine the waters are sleeping. But the broken hearted canes nigh a second spring. Oh, the wife who may cease fry the greeting. Are ye take the high road, when I'll take the low road. I wish near the way for good night. And I hope that in her dreams she'll find a new meaning. By the bonny, bonny banks, oh, let Man. There we go, a little improv. I can't sing it the same way all the time. What kind of fun would that be? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because you screwed it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not wise guy, huh? Yeah, I'm quiet, Joe. <laughs> Have a good night, Nilla Wafer, in the sweet dreams. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Susan Dolan says, two phantom outside of just thank God Disney didn't get their hands on Carson. Oh, load it be, load it be. Days are coming if there be that if they'd have gotten a hold of that. Days are coming. Uh, I will say hello to Bill Cipher if he makes it onto the show tonight. But I've done a lot of the high notes. But I'm gonna do one more. And this is gonna go out to all of those who you know, this is a song of America. Not just a song of the South, it is a song of America. I'm gonna have to. I usually like to follow this one up uh, because this is, you know, is what it is. So we'll do this one right quick, and then we'll uh, do uh, a parting glass for those loved and lost. How's that sound? We'll do a parting glass, and then possibly uh, whiskey in the jar, even though I have no whiskey for me jar. <laughs> we'll at the very least try to have whiskey in the jar. Phantom Outsider says, quite a bit of John Carter books are now also public domain. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. <clears throat> so let's do this one for you. How oh, I wish I was a land of cotton. Old times, they are not forgotten. Look away, look away, look away, Dixieland. Then I wish I was in Dixie. Hooray, hooray, in Dixieland, I'll take my stand. To live and die in Dixie, in Dixie land, where I was born early on one frosty morn. Look away, look away, 
Look away, Dixie land. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. On. His truth is a marching on. There we are. Now, if you all are drinking this fine evening, I recommend that you pour yourself some bourbon or some scotch or your beer, or your libation of choice. I shall drink in spirit, as I do not have any libation in the home. But this will go out to not just Cardinal Sin, but uh, I believe uh, Baron Von Doom. Just another. Is it just another or son of a red shirt? I know it's a, one of the red shirts. There's a multitude of people that we've lost in this community, with Gil being the most recent. So, if you will fill your decanters, steins, vessels, goblets, whatever you may prefer, have a choice of spirit, libation, or alcohol, or any of and all of the above, <clears throat> join me in the raising of a parting glass. All the money that e'er I had, I spent it in good company. And all the harm that e'er I done, alas, it was to none but me. And all I've done for want of wit, the memory now I can't recall. So fill to me the parting glass. Good night and joy be to you all. So fill to me the parting glass. And drink a health whate'er befall. Then gently rise and softly call. Good night and joy be to you all. And all the comrades that e'er I had, they're sorry for my going away. And all the sweethearts that e'er I had, They'd wish me one more day to stay. But since it fell into my lot, That I should rise and you should not, I'll gently rise and softly call, Good night and joy be to you all. Fill to me the parting glass And drink a health water before Then gently rise and softly call Good night and joy be to you all But since it fell into my lot That I should rise and you should not I'll gently rise and softly call. Good night and joy be to you all. So fill to me the parting glass and drink a health whatever befall. Then gently rise and softly call. Good night and joy be to you all. Good 
good stuff, says Duncan Wright. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Indeed. John Carter of Mars RPG. Well, 671. Uh, nice. Movie of shoots and ladders. Oh, God, no. What are you got? What have you guys talked to? Start talking about. Well, I was pouring me heart out. Let's see here. I think the best John Carter of Mars reference. Was in Marvel Comics Excalibur, featuring Nightcrawler from the John Carter. Ah, I see, I see. Hmm. Oh shit, I was 30 minutes behind. Yes, yes, you were. Are we up to uh, 71? Uh, 272? 274? <laughs> ah, Sean Carter, it is good to see you, lad. Uh, I believe that uh, DC reprised a uh, role. Oh, DC, oh, uh, song. So I think I could get away with singing the one that's the bass cut, right? The early Excalibur cross time caper was amazing. Yes, it was. Oh, man, goosebumps. Yes. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. I believe he won't be too upset if I sing your song that you sent to me uh, before DC got a hold of it and edited it. Edited it. Edited it. Edited it. It's like saying cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon. Cinnamon. <laughs> oh, you got to get your eyes to Mars. Come on, Sean Carter, get your eyes to Mars. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, I get to actually display my Arnold uh, tomorrow. We got some new subscribers that I want to give a shout out to. We got Woodward Brown, hail to you. Mr. Bonka, hail to you. Gaston Isella, it's good to see you. David Wallace, 1994. It's good to see you as well. Uh, these are the name subscribers that have uh, recently joined my channel tonight. And we are already well past 40 new guys. So thank you guys so much. Uh, you know, due to atmospheric conditions. Are oh, you talking about what happens whenever I break the face mask, right? Like this. <laughs> that <laughs> with the eyeballs. <laughs> Those atmospheric conditions, right? You know, the really light nitrogen atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I Actually, that was one of, like, my first bits when I first started, like, doing stand-up and shit was Arnold Schwarzenegger just going, ah, 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 you know, with, based off of the, um, the, the, the scene from... <laughs> from Total Recall, where he's just like, ah, ah, ah. and I'm like, Arnold Schwarzenegger while he's eating. Ah, 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 ah. Arnold Schwarzenegger in bed. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not a tumor. Shut up. But speaking of Arnold, we uh, will be covering um, we will be covering uh, True Lies uh, with uh, another uh, another uh, great uh, classic from the uh, old world days. Uh, Rocco the Brave says, "Congrats, Tony. See you tomorrow night. Let's go seven seven seven. If I do that, then I will I'll do a Vegas show. Like I'll just do like a straight up like crooner Vegas show just for the seven seven seven. Yes, True Lies was great." Absolutely, True Lies was amazing. Uh, I'll, if uh, if I don't if if I don't have the funds to be able to do the Fallout after party just backstage, then I'm going to go ahead and watch True Lies tonight because I already have a copy. I'll be watching that bad boy tonight. I did watch uh, episode one of STD with Robert Wright, and my God, man. He was basically the Virgil to my Dante as I was led through the inferno. <laughs> oh, 
of that episode of STD. I was shown perdition by the guide, the former poet of Virgil and philosopher who who's giving me the tour of the inferno <laughs> with Robert Wright. <laughs> My God. Ah, oh, let's sing one word. Let's put ourselves one more old fashioned, yeah? And do this K in the jar, right? It's the classic one. Yes. All right, here we are. This K in the jar. And that all round are Irish and Scottish ditties in the United Kingdom, right? Right, right. <clears throat> As I was a going over the far famed Kerry Mountains, I met with Captain Farrell and his money he was counting. I first produced me pistol, then, then I produced me rapier, saying, Stand and deliver, for he were a bold deceiver. Musha ring, dum a doo, dum a da. Whack for the daddy o, whack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. I counted out his money and I made a pretty penny. I put it in me pocket and I took it home to Jenny. She sighed and she swore that she never would deceive me. But the devil take the woman for they never can be easy. Usha ring dum a doo dum a da. Whack for the daddy o. Back for the daddy o, oh, there's whiskey in the jar. I went unto my chamber, all for to take a slumber. I dreamt of gold and jewels, and for sure it was no wonder. But Jenny drew me chargers, and she filled them up with water, for sending Captain Farrell to be ready for the slaughter. Musha ring dum a doo dum a da. Back for the daddy o, oh. back for the daddy o, oh, there's whiskey in the jar. Was early in the morning before I rose to travel. Up came a band of footmen and the likewise Captain Farrell. I first produced my pistol, for she stolen away me rapier. I couldn't shoot the water, so a prisoner I was taken. Who shall ring dum a doo dum a da? Whack for the daddy o, whack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. If anyone can aid me, tis me brother in the army. If I can find his station in the cork or in Killarney, and if he'll go with me, we'll be rubbing through Kilkenny, and I'm sure he'll treat me better than me on a Spartan Jenny. Musha ring, dum a doo, dum a da. Whack fall the daddy o, whack fall the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. There's some that take delight in the carriages a rolling, others take delight in the hurley and the bowling. But I take delight in the juice of the barley and cutting pretty fair maids in the morning, bright and early. Musha ring, dum a doo, dum a da. Whack fall the daddy o, whack fall the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. Musha ring, dum a doo, dum a da. Whack fall the daddy o, whack fall the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. I whiskey in the jar, but not for me. Perhaps by the end of the week, whenever I get paid from the job that has me furloughed, as the true famine doesn't start until the week after. <laughs> Two weeks after, I should say. Ah, uh, yes, Richard Spake says, the new scene is something that I'd love to talk about. Yeah, we, I, I hope that we cover it. Because, again, I am a guest. I, I follow their lead. I'm not a member of the full timers as usually I don't have Wednesdays off. It's only a fluke that I am off this Wednesday. We are now up to 675 new subscribers, which is absolutely awesome. Thank you guys for choosing me tonight. We might get to 700. 700. Wish I had more slow burn songs. <laughs> well, <clears throat> let's let's uh, let's do some slow burn songs because I like I said I can already feel the fog in the back of my throat, which means that it's going to be difficult. I will have to speak as good old Alistair, 
before the lyrics and after the lyrics. Let's try. Uh, let's try and just lower and bring out a little bit of my uh, <coughs> little bit of my uh, lower uh, tones. I hate to do this, my brother Stark around, but I need to run. It is is perfectly fine. Thank you for becoming a member of the channel at the Defender level. It means a whole hell of a lot. God bless. And uh, we'll be wrapping this bad boy up, uh, you know, no, no, round five. It might be four, four and a half, might be five and a half. It all depends on how I feel, uh, especially if people need to go to bed, have to go to work tomorrow, if it's going to taper off like this. Um, you know, that's perfectly fine. Uh, uh, if you have some lemon and lime juice, yes. Uh, 700, as a man would say, don't get cocky, but wow, amazing. Am I at 700? I am not at 700. I'm at 675. Um, but it's good to see you, Jedi Master Raven. I hope that you're doing well. Uh, I'm not in any way a big shot for having 700 subs or 675. I'm not a big shot. I'm not a big shot if I had 50K. I'm not a big shot if I had 100K. The only way that I would say that I'm big shot is if I had a, a over a million. Because even at the 500K level, with the way that they're paying out now, and with the way that YouTube is choke holding, you know, you become a, for lack of a better word, you become, you become a uh, shackled to, to the system. And you no longer have a life because at that point to please the algorithm, to tickle the algorithm, you will have to constantly upload videos every single day. You will have to meet your schedule every single week, like in order to have that kind of audience and keep it. So no, no, no nowhere, nowhere close. To being a big shot. Uh, Jedi Master Raven goes on to say, I have one sub. You are a big shot, pal. Ah, it's all relative, I guess, but I'm just a big old country boy who wears his heart on his sleeve. And I say, nah, I ain't no celebrity, but I'm glad that I'm, you know, entertaining you all. Ah, Rob Wright, welcome back. Speak of the devil, and here he is. Uh, love you, brother. Uh, if you need anything, just ask. Family always does for family. N no donation to this channel is unearned. If you want to give a mega chat, a mega mega chat through the PayPal, I will earn it by doing you a song. Don't I? I don't like just having money thrown at me. I have to do something for it. I have to feel as if I earned. it. Uh, and so, but I appreciate, I appreciate the offer, but let me earn it. And I hope that I have earned uh, your generosity that you have uh, supported this channel with so far. <clears throat> um, good to see you again, Rob Wright. You ready for tomorrow? <laughs> uh, 17th, I'll send you a super chat. Sounds good. Yeah, and now I'm going to have a Radio Demon show right after uh, PCB, uh, Rob Wright. Uh, so I'm definitely going to need a lot of water. <laughs> and, and as as Richard Spake says, lemon and lime. Um, for sure. Uh, lemon and lime indeed. We're going to have to have that high citrus fruits. fruits and uh, probably just, you know, just finish the video for Ghostbusters. And you've been listening the whole time or... Going in and out, uh, you you are you just missed the uh, whiskey in the jar segment. I have no libation whatsoever, so it feels kind of naked to 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 sing these drinking tunes um, because again, where I'm so tight right now, I can't I can't even buy alcohol. You know, I'm like, booze is not food. Contrary to what uh, uh, to sword throat, tenacious D has a sale going right. That's a somber song that I can do. That's a somber. I haven't done this one in a long time. Just, there we go. 
this is a song <clears throat> for the ladies. But fellas, listen closely. You don't always have to fuck her hard. In fact, sometimes that's not right to do. Sometimes you got to make some love and fucking give her some smoochies too. And sometimes you've got to squeeze. And sometimes you've got to say please. Uh, sometimes you've got to say, hey, I'm gonna fuck you softly. I'm gonna screw you gently. I'm gonna hump you sweetly. I'm gonna bow you discreetly. And then you say, hey, I brought you flowers. And then you say, wait a minute, Sally. I think I got something in my teeth. Could you get it out for me? That's fucking teamwork. What's your favorite position? That's cool with me. It's not my favorite, but I'll do it for you. What's your favorite dish? I'm not going to cook it, but I'll order it from Zanzibar. And then I'm going to love you completely. And then I'll fucking fuck you discreetly. And then I'll fucking bone you completely. But then... I'm going to fuck you ah, ah, ah. There you go. Oh, whiskey in the jar is one of my favorite. Uh, uh, do I do another one for Robert Detroit? Do I do I go back down that line? Well, should I, should I, should I? Well, he's been hard at work with his Ghostbusters review. I suppose we could. Are you all fine with me doing another uh, run of uh, Whiskey in the Jar? I could definitely do that for you all. That is of no consequence, just because Robert Wright hasn't heard it. I don't mind doing it again. I don't mind doing it again. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs, we went down. We were at 675, now we're at 672. That's not cool, but hey, you win some, you lose some. We shot past the, uh, the mark, and that makes me happy that we did. We shot past the mark of 666, so. A few folks that are being whittled out by the wrath of the YouTubes. So we'll keep refreshing that and we'll keep giving you the updates on that. Some dailies on the eight, 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 eight. Let us see what we have in our magic bag tonight. So you want another uh, uh, Whiskey in the Jar performance? Is that alright with you all? Because I will do it if that's what you like. Don't get cocky, kid. was a Star Wars reference in it. It was indeed. It was indeed, sir. It was indeed. I got one! I got one! Don't get cocky! <laughs> Indeedly do. Don't get cocky. Alrighty. Let's go ahead. I'll refresh that. And we'll just do this again. We'll do... We'll do... Yes. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it just for Rob Wright. I mean, he he was... Again, he, you did guide me through hell, Virgil. So Dante will now pay uh, his coin. Jedi Master Raven says, You got a lot tonight, bud, and you can buy some produce and maybe a steak at the store. Uh, yes, once the money is deposited into my account, most indefinitely. Because um, right now, all of this stuff, I don't get paid till the 20th. But I also get paid for my other job on Friday. So 
we are almost to the Yom of the Yom stretch. So this is this is a, a, a encore of whiskey in the jar. <clears throat> and then I will lower my uh, vocal center uh, to baritone and a little bass and sing some uh, some uh, Tennessee Ernie Hudson. Not Ernie Hudson. Uh, if I could speak to the Ernie Ford. So let's go ahead and do this one for Rob Wright. Here you go, sir. And thank you again for guiding me through hell. Because it was most definitely hell. <laughs> As I was a-going over the far-famed Cuddy Mountains, I met with Captain Federal and his money he was counting. I first produced me pistol, and then I produced me rapier, saying stand and deliver, for he were a bold deceiver. Musha, ring, dumma doo, dumma da. <laughs> whack for the daddy o, whack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. I counted out his money, and it made a pretty penny. I put it in me pocket, and I took it home to Jenny. She sighed and she swore that she never would deceive me. But the devil take the woman, for they never can be easy. Musha, ring, dum a doo dum a da <laughs> Whack for the daddy -o. Whack for the daddy -o. There's whiskey in the jar. I went on to my chamber, all for to take a slumber. I dreamt of golden jewels, and for sure it was no wonder. But Jenny drew me charges, and she filled them up with water. And said for Captain Farrell to be ready for the slaughter. Boosh, I ring, dum a doo, dum a da. <laughs> whack for the daddy o. Whack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. Twas early in the morning before I rose to travel. Up comes a band of footmen and a likewise Captain Farrell. But I first produced me pistol, for she stolen away me rapier. I couldn't shoot the water, so a prisoner I was taken. Musha, ring, dum a doo, dum a da. <laughs> whack for the daddy o, whack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. If anyone can aid me, tis me brother in the army. If I can find his station out in Cork or in Killarney, and if he'll go with me, we'll be roaming through Kilkenny, and I'm sure he'll treat me better than me on a Spartan Jenny. Busha, ring, dum a doo, dum a da. <laughs> whack for the daddy o, whack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. There's some that take delight in the carriages are rolling. And others take delight in the hurley and the bowling. But I take delight in the juice of the barley. And counting pretty fair maids in the morning, bright and early. Musha, ring, dum a doo, dum a da. <laughs> whack for the daddy o. Whack for the daddy o. There's whiskey in the jar. Musha, ring, dum a doo, dum a da. Whack for the daddy o. Whack for the daddy -o. there's a whiskey in the jar. <laughs> not one, not twice, but twice. You get where I'm going with this. Double shots. Twin fist in it. That's right. Twin fist in it. Cheers, brother. Drink a double on me because I have no spirits in the house, unfortunately, right now. So uh, have a drink on me. Have a drink on me! <laughs> All righty then. All righty then. Well, Tennessee Ernie Ford. Yes. Yes, for my love, Lucy. Yes, of I Love Lucy fame. Yes. <clears throat> Let's see if I can bring this voice down a bit. Regain my center. <clears throat> Oh, come, all you young fellers, so young and so fine. Seek not your fortune in a dark, dreary mine. It'll form as a habit and seep in your soul till the stream of your blood runs as black as the coal. Where it's dark as a dungeon and damp as the dew. And danger is double, and pleasures are few. Where the rain never falls, and the sun never shines, it's dark as a dungeon way down in the mine. 
Well, it's many a man that I've seen in my day. Like a fiend with his dope and a drunkard with his wine. A man will have lust for the lure of the mine. And pray when I'm dead and my ages shall roll that my body would blacken and turn into coal. Then I'll look from the door of my heavenly home and pity the miner who's digging my bones where it's dark as a dungeon and damp as the dew. Danger is double and the pleasures are few where the rain never sets and the sun never shines. It's dark as a dungeon way down in the mine. Dark as a dungeon way down in the mine. <clears throat> well, gentlemen, what do we got tonight, kids? Well, we, we got the late ones. So I guess it's uh, enough exercise for, for one night. <laughs> so, 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 uh, so, so, what's your credentials? Credentials? Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a new subscriber? Really, Duncan Wright? No, you're not. You're, you're, you've been here for a little bit. <laughs> well, thank you if, if you had to resubscribe. Appreciate it. Old bull and a young bull standing on the top of a hill overlooking a herd of cattle. The young bull says, let's run down there and fuck one of them. The old bull pauses and says, okay, let's, uh, let's uh, get, the, uh, get the rim shot. <laughs> get the rim shot for this one. But <laughs> Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me until the wee hours of the morning. Wee hours. Hail Andrew Lundell. It's good to see you. Hopefully you're doing well. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> until then, I'm going to continue my bit. <clears throat> Yes, your credentials. Oh, my credentials. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Hail, real Wade. Uh, I intended truly are. I am a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I've been through the Black Plague and I had a pretty good time during that. I see The Exorcist 157 times and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it. Not to mention that you're talking to a dead guy. Now, what do you think? You think I'm qualified? Who was just wondering if you could be scary. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, scary. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of this? Ah! What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> nice fucking model, Hong Hong. <laughs> oh, load of V, load of V, load of V. Ah, oh, check out Twitter later. I uh, will give it a I will give it a gander as I uh, settle in to watch Two Lies. Uh, whenever I'm done here. For tomorrow. And yes, as usually what happens is I'll be down there doing maintenance to an important component to the massive array of uh, field generators for the fishbowl. And this mutant guy approaches me and he's like Blaster from, from uh, Beyond Thunderdome. You know, he's got big, like nine and a half foot tall hunk of meat you know learn to throw your voice for your friends for the parties home 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 <laughs> well you know this 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 guy with a club comes up to me and i'm working on something important on the field i look at him and i go oh hey man you don't have to do that you don't have to hit me bonk and i wake up i'm in a dark room with a microphone and a screen in front of me there's gary ambrosia looking at me dead in the eye and going, you better be fucking funny. And I'm like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> That's that. Yeah, everybody thinks getting on pop culture breakdowns a walk in the park. Let me tell you, it's just not easy. <laughs> not easy. 
you know, you got this big old goose egg on the top of your head, you know, from, from being lumped by, by whatever mutant uh, experiment DC's working on for the week. <laughs> Just dragging you by your legs from, from your job. Gary's there going, you better be fucking funny. <laughs> uh, shout out to Gary. Gary's been real. Real good friend, been giving me a lot of uh, sage advice, very grounded advice, and I uh, can't thank him enough for that. Everybody's been giving me some good advice, uh, everything that's been going on lately. Uh, so, we're going to Beetlejuice. Let's hear a little Belafonte. I don't know where Canadian Spider-Man went. Oh, I know where Canadian Spider-Man is. He's hanging out. We'll hold off on the Belafonte till he gets here. I know he'll want to hear the Belafonte. So in the meantime, let us just sing some songs that are within our range so we can maintain a comfort level. We'll do that and then we'll do a transcript reading. Let's do let's do one of each. Let's go with um, with another uh, crooner classic. Yeah. This one's another one by uh, the chairman of the board. Uh, it goes a little bit like this. <clears throat> Blue moon, you saw me standing alone Without a dream in my heart Without a love of my own Blue moon you knew just what I was there for. You heard me saying a prayer for someone I really could care for. And then there suddenly appeared before me the only one my arms will hold. I heard somebody whisper, please adore me. And when I looked, the moon had turned to gold. Blue moon. Now I'm no longer alone Without a dream in my heart Without a love of my own And then there suddenly appeared before me The only one my arms will ever hold I heard somebody whisper, please adore me And when I looked, the moon had turned to go blue moon now I'm no longer alone Without a dream in my heart Without a love of my own Blue moon Now I'm no longer alone Without a dream in my heart Without a love of my own Ah, there we are and let's go ahead and do one more while we're here. Just while we are here. <clears throat> and this, this one you'll often hear on uh, FNN, uh, Blue Moon of Kentucky, Keep On Shining. Yes. This is one of the trifecta that um, Rob Wright likes to have. His Lordship at the Hollow Earth sing for the lovely ladies out there. Um, this is the one that I know that I can do of the three. So I will do that one now. <clears throat> I took a trip on a train and I thought about you. I passed a shadowy lane and I thought about you. Two or three cars parked under the stars, winding streams. Moon shining down on some little town and with each beam the same old dream. And every stop that we made, oh, I thought about you. 
And when I pulled down the shade, then I really felt blue. I peeked through the crack and looked at the track, the one going back to you. And what did I do? I thought about you. There were two or three cars parked under the stars, a winding stream. Moon shining down on some little town, and with each beam, the same old dream. Then I peeked through the crack, and I horn dogged at you. And I know I won't look back, cause you are right there, it's true. And what did I do? Uh huh. I thought about you. And then I did things thinking about you. What? Uh, well, no, was that? Well, was I still in the air? Holy crap! <laughs> I had to make it funny. I had to put my own spin on it. You can't just take, take. You know. But yeah, you can hear that one done a lot better <laughs> at the castle. Um. But yes, uh, <laughs> thank you, Robert Wright. At least it passes muster with Robert Wright. And then if if I've done that, then uh, then I have done a, a good thing. Looks like we got two more people that have rejoined. So we're back to 674. So YouTube's a pruning. Uh, when it comes to pruning, it ain't what you cut. It's what you don't cut. I, I know, right? So let's go ahead and do a transcript reading. Now, this one is a classic. And again, this is a, a transcript reading that I'm picking specifically to reorient my voice back down into the center so that the damage that I have done to it tonight, which I've done damage to, uh, I can feel it, uh, will not be as severe for tomorrow. Um, so cheers. Let me drink some of this, uh, this Pepsi here. I got a Pepsi at least. Uh, one of the things that I've learned training my voice, which I've done without formal training, none of the stuff that I do, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a Hollywood. I'm not, uh, I, 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 while, while I have been formally trained on how to play the piano, I'm not, you know, all of my vocal talents has been myself just, watching and re-watching things that I liked until I sounded like them. Uh, there's an episode of The Simpsons where Apu, uh, you know, has apparently got the best Steve Perry impersonation out there to the point that they do a Journey cover band. <laughs> you know, like, that, that. you know, it's that kind of, like, mimicry. I'm a, I, I'm a, I'm a mockingbird. I, 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 rather than an actual, like, professionally taught singer i'm much more of a mockingbird so i did impersonations first and then i got into song and uh that's my story and i'm sticking to it <clears throat> so here's a little orson well speaking of mocking the uh, mockingbirds uh mimicry and <clears throat> this again just did recenter my voice here so <clears throat> we know a remote farm in lincolnshire where mrs buckley lives July, peas grow there. You really mean that? Oh, uh, uh, yes. So, so in other words, I'd start half a second later. Don't you think you'd really want to say July over the snow? Isn't that the fun of it? It, it is if you can. If you can make it about when that shot disappears, it'll take more. I think it's so nice that we see a snow-covered field and say every July, peas grow there. We know a remote farm in Lincolnshire where Mrs. Buckley lives. Every July, peas grow there. Not even the fields, you see. Talking about them growing. She's picked them. <laughs> what? In July. I don't understand you, then. When must when must be over for July? When we get out of that snowy field. But I was out. We want a can of peas. A big dish of peas, when I said in July. Oh, I'm so sorry, Austin. Yes, always. I'm always past that. You are? Yes. What's about I say in July? You emphasize a bit in, in July. 
Why, that doesn't make any sense. Sorry, I don't know the way in a sing English sentence in which you can begin a sentence within and emphasize it. Give me a jury and show me how you can say in July and I'll, I'll go down on you. It's just idiotic. If you'll forgive my saying so. That's just stupid. In July. I love how impossible you emphasize in in July. Impossible. Meaningless. I think all they were thinking about was they didn't want to. He isn't thinking. Olsen, can we just do it one last time? Yeah. And it was my fault. I should have said in July. If you could leave every July, you, you didn't say it. You didn't say it. He said it. I said every July. Your friend, every July? So after this shot. No, you don't really mean every July. It, it is, but it's, it's just a bad copy. If it's in July, of course it's every July. There's too much directing going on around here. Norway. <clears throat> Fish finger, nor Findus, Norway. We know a captain, a fjord in Norway, near where the cod gather in great shoals. There Jan Stan Stan Gillant shit. A fraction more on the show's thing, because you rolled it around very nicely. Yeah, I roll it around and I have no more time. You don't know what I'm up against. It's because of of things that are only correct because they're grammatical, but they're tough on the air, you see. It's a very wearing one. I'm pleasant to read, I'm rewarding. Because Findus frees the cod at sea, and then add a crisp crumb, uh, crisp crumb coating. How's that? Wrong with that? That's uh, tough. Crumb crisp coating. How's that? I think no, because of the way it's written. You need to break it up because it's not. It's not as conversationally written. What? Take crumb out. That's the word. Take crumb out. Good. Here under protest is beef burger. <clears throat> we know a little place, the American Far West. Charlie Briggs chops up the finest prairie-fed beef, and it tastes... This is a lot of shit, you know that? You want one more? I, I do, actually. More on buck beef? <laughs> you missed the first beef, actually, completely. What do you mean, missed it? You you're emphasizing prairie-fed. You can't emphasize beef, that's... Like him wanting me to emphasize in before July. Come on, fellas, you're losing your heads. I wouldn't act, direct any living actor like this in Shakespeare. Will you do this? It's impossible. Olsen, you did six last year, and by far it's all way the best. I know the reason. The right reading for this is the one I'm giving it. For the moment. I've spent 20 times more for you people than any other commercial I've ever made. You are such pests. Now, what is it that you want? And now I think in the depths of your ignorance, what is it that you want? Whatever it is you want, I can't deliver because I just don't see it. That was absolutely fine. It really was. Here, this isn't worth it. No money is worth listening to it. <laughs> and there you go, a little, a little Orson Welles. And now, now my voice feels a little bit more recentered. Uh, <laughs> want one more? I do actually want more buck beef. Orson Welles was another one of my many uh, inspirations. He yeah, had that, uh, that 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 presence that he gives in whatever performance he does. He has a very massive presence, whether it is, you know, small. Or, or big, you know, like, yeah, I got to give it up to, to, all right, Richard Spake has sent me a thingy. Yes, that's -a me. Do, 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 do. Pepsi, it's not a Nuka Cola. No, it's not. It's, at least it's not a Pepsi free. If I would ask for that, I would have been like, "Can I do Carl Speckler from Caddyshack?" Uh, that's in my range, but I would have to get the transcript. I would have to rewatch the scene. Let me uh, get you back on that. Let me go ahead and pull up the mystical, magical show notes, not to be confused. With the show notes that you will find over there on King Dolphin. This is literally just called show notes, as in 
what to do coming up. You want me to do Carl Speckler from Caddyshack. So we will now go ahead and put it on the list. And I do have a la I do have a list. I do have a list for you all that I must adhere to. Let's go ahead and I believe I believe I got about half an hour in me. So let's go ahead and start winding down. And I want to thank everybody who has uh, hung out with me thus far. We had a very big turnout earlier on in the show. And we had a lot of content for you all. And hopefully I won't have to cut out too many covers. Um, as far as uh, Piani is concerned, um, I got to be very careful with that. So I'm thinking my first Avengers Assembly membership chat or membership stream is when I will plug the piano in and, and, and play some songs that I know on the piano uh, and see if that, if that is something that I can do uh, without uh, being dinged. And if that's the case, and that's even more incentive, right? <laughs> so, so we'll we'll we're gonna, we're gonna do some experimentations on that front. Of course, I could just plug it in, and just bash the keys. I could always do that, <laughs> but that would run everybody off. And we're back up to six seventy five. Thank you guys for hanging out. And we got a new subscriber. Uh, nope, I've already read that one. We've already read that one, so we should be uh, should be getting in some folks. Uh, it looks like. Uh, are you going to have a Derby Day live stream next month uh, for the Kentucky Derby? Um, do you do you do you bet? Do you? I haven't I haven't had I haven't bet on a horse in a long time. Uh, hail, hail to CEO Franco Juan Guerra. Good to see you. Do you think that there would be a uh, uh, Coverage for the Kentucky Derby? Do you think that that, that that might be something that you guys would be interested in? As uh, I mean, I don't know what horses are racing nowadays. I would I would be able to get their numbers, but I wouldn't be you know I'm not like going to be a long term fan of any of these currently active horses, currently active race horses. Uh, I wouldn't know uh, sh shit from Shinola. I could only you know see their stats and their percentages of winning. So I wouldn't have a fan horse. Um, well, Rob Wright uh, gave me an idea to uh, discuss uh, or cover the, the Kentucky Derby next month. But yeah, it is coming. I should go up to Churchill Downs and uh, get a good seat. At least cover the race. I don't know if I'll put a bet on it, though. Um, but yeah, yeah, that sounds like fun. Sounds like something that uh, would be would be fun to do. Now that they've got vertical streaming and you can literally vertically stream from your phone, that's something that we can do now on YouTube. Uh, you can vertical stream, which I think is pretty funny that uh, we can vertical stream, but I uh, still want to uh, still want to give us uh, a bunch of crap. A bunch of crap, man. A bunch of crap. <laughs> Sarah, I've always wanted to go. I have a seersucker suit. Oh, that's really, really cool. That is super cool, Robert. Yeah. Well, if I can, if I can get the time off and uh, and I can go up there, we'll we'll see if we can't go and watch the race. No promises, though. That's something that I can't promise. Because if I, uh, you are you are relatively late. Uh, we've been going for four hours. Uh, CEO Franco Juan Guerra, um, wanting to end this at about four and a half, no later than five. I can go to five, um, now that you're here. Uh, but yeah, it's been a very fun matinee, and I'm doing a, another matinee on Thursday starting at 7 30 Central, 8 30 Eastern. And uh, after, well, no, 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 I'm, I'm still here. You still got a couple of songs. Hell, throw me one, ask me to do one. I'll do it for you. Um, 
So, you know, it's like, we could probably, we could probably make that happen, but I don't want to make a promise because if I make a promise that I'm going to go to the Kentucky Derby, then I have to commit to it. Uh, I think I'll be there. No promises. See, you, you got the same mindset. If you promise that you're going to do something, you say you're going to do something, then you have to commit to it and you have to complete it. Even if it takes you, in, the, in, my, in this instance, like a year. If it takes me a year, you know, then I'll do it. If it takes me a year. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh-oh. Oh, I know what you want. The song, child. No. You missed it earlier. Stone Racket was here. Grayling. And he had Chico and Harpo. There was cats everywhere. Yes, there were. <clears throat> but anyway. Let's do another tune for you all. Nekara chana. Hey. And the Akara Mimi. Magnificent. Let's go ahead and do another song for you all. Now, child, go. Don't make me. I'll spray. No better to get around daddy's wires. All right. Let's go ahead and wind down this evening. Let's, uh, even though, even though I am kind of like, oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, it's a good one. To, if I can remember the uh, tune to it, it's been a while since I, I only remember the my old Kentucky home. I only remember that particular instance at the given time because it's been that long since I've sung it. All right, we can definitely. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if we can. Yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, this is definitely because I, I remember I remember my old Kentucky home. That's like the only one I remember. I don't want to be. Let me let me put that one on the list too. You would think that I've lived lived here for thirty years and. <laughs> Let me make sure that I can, because I have a rule. If I can't sing it good, I don't sing it. Um, but I tell you what, I will sing. Uh, and again, wow, that's uh, that's definitely not it. Um, Let's try uh there we go that's better there we go <clears throat> be careful the really old lyrics has some language yes they do so let me uh put a pin on that and sing this one instead <clears throat> The moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. The stars belong to everyone. They gleam there for you and me. The flowers in spring, the robins that sing, the moonbeams that shine, they're yours, they're mine. And love can come to everyone. The best things in life are free. Mm-hmm. 
the flowers in spring, the robins that sing, the moonbeams that shine, they're yours, they're mine. And love can come to everyone. The best things in life are free. Why, thank you, Rob Wright. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it's a beautiful song. That's why I had to hum it, hum it, and then sing it, you know, like. <laughs> Had to, had to had to do more than just the ninety seconds because <laughs> it's just that beautiful. So how about this? Let's do another ink ink spots one for you all tonight. Usually I have Alistar handle the ink spots, but he's already had his segment for the evening. So I will sing this one. <clears throat> he is definitely giving me the eyeballs from my rating. It's all over, but the crying, and nobody's crying but me friends all over know I'm trying to forget about how much I care for you it's all over but the dreaming or little dreams that keep crying to come true. It's all over, but the crying and I can't get over crying over you do, 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 do. it's all over but the crying and nobody's crying but me do, 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 do. oh friends all over no i'm trying to forget about how much that i kept for you do, 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 do. It's all over but the dreaming. Poor little dreams that keep trying to come true. It's all over but the crying. And I can't get over crying over you. It's all over but the crying. Nang, nang, nang. While we're on the subject of that tin pan alley. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Rob Wright. Thank you. Thank you. So, I'm here for my uh, cut. I'm here for my money. What money? AC said 10%. Too bad AC ain't in charge no more. Where is he now? He's upstairs taking a bath. I tell you what I'm going to do, snakes. I'm going to give you to the count of ten. To get you cheating, yellow, no good carcass off my property before I pump your guts full of lead. No, 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 come on, Johnny. I'm sorry. One, two, ten. <laughs> Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> I really need to get like a Tommy Gun sound effect to play while I do that. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. To think that I thought that that was a, a real movie 
back when I was a kid. When I watched Home Alone, I was like, I want angels with filthy hearts, and I want them now. I was on a Bogart kick, and I needed to watch all the mobster movies. Is that so hard? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do uh, let's do another one. This one's do some Fallout tunes. Call it because again, Fallout will be out on Amazon Prime in just a few hours. And again, I want to make the announcement that I will be covering it. Snail Messiah and I will be covering it on Sunday. Uh, and I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be bluntly honest. I, I have a bad feeling as the reason why they're releasing it now. It's because they're terrified of what they've done. Or they're remorseful of what they've done. And I, I just don't know, man. I just don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. But uh, we will be uh, watching it. And I think I need to get a hold of Rocco the Brave and see if he wants in on that action. And uh, we will be covering it in detail. So I'm gonna. I'm actually going to prop up my phone, and instead of watching it on a big screen, I'm gonna watch it on my phone so that I save my hotspot data to be able to cover it Sunday. Um, as well as continue with my uh, program tonight. Let me go ahead and double check and see just how much I've used the hotspot tonight. Okay, yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to be wrapping this up in about 15 minutes. And that way uh, I got enough for Pop Culture Breakdown tomorrow and uh, the matinee Thursday evening. So I want to be able to broadcast those uh, shows uh, forthwith and be there for uh, Pop Culture Breakdown in the middle as well as do the Alice Store show that night. Uh, so... With that, we're going to sing a couple more tunes. We're going to do an 11 o'clock number, and then we're going to cover our uh, final. Let's go ahead and do uh, one more uh, ad block. Because, again, for people like you, uh, the community, you know, it, it, you know, it really is about you. That's the reason why I'm here, to keep the party going and to keep the party going with you. And I don't give King Dolphin TV a lot of love. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a King Dolphin block. And uh, we're going to advertise Manorama, who just wrapped up their show as well. Uh, do I know any moody blues songs? Uh, I can sing you a blues uh, tune right quick. One second. Um, let's see here. Do I want to do this? Are you, are you fine with Harlem blues? Uh, let's see here. Um, which one do I want to do? more jazzy but it's harlem how about this this one's by winoni harris let's do that one for you how's that sound steve stream was off and we were we were talking about uh taking a minute about guns hopefully you can see it when you get the chance it is on my oh the moody blues uh let's see here. rock band oh the moody blues oh oh Let's see here. Let's see here. Knights in white satin. Ah, yes. Oh, uh, God. Um, God, there's a lot of good songs here. Shit. I definitely want to do I'm Just a Singer. I don't know all of it, but let me put that on the list because that makes... Uh, if I were to do any of the Moody Blues... Uh, uh, I would I would do I'm just a singer, and because it, it it kind of fits, you know what I mean. So let's put that on the list as well. If you had the voice, yeah, it's a good one too. Okay, so. Uh, Yes, I, I do plan on putting the tape in CEO Frank or Juan Guerra. I'm going to put the tape in and rewatch it. Your Wildest Dreams is another great one. Yes. 
All good ones. Uh, I didn't sing a Stan Bush song tonight. We may be taking this to 445. I didn't sing Stan Bush. This is the 40th anniversary of Transformers. What the hell am I doing in my life? Uh, okay, so... Uh, we can do this one right quick. And then I'll sing a Stan Bush tune. And then I'll do the 11 o'clock number. Then I'll run the ads. Then I'll close up. Then I'll close up shop. There we go. All right. So we got grandma plays the numbers. Really, today is the 40th. Is what I was told from uh, Comic Relief Crusader is the 40th anniversary. I thought it was in May. Yay, Stan Bush. Yes. Yes. All right. So um, let's go ahead and do this one right We found out, now we know, we found out, yes we did, no we found out, yes we did, the grandma plays the numbers, we found out, yes we did, oh we found out, she couldn't keep it hit, oh we found out, and now we know that grandma plays the numbers, thinks about them every day, dreams about them every night, gets up early in the morning, See all them numbers come down just right. Oh, yes, we know. We found out. Bless her soul. We found out. Bless her soul. We found out. The grandma plays the numbers. Yes, we know. We found out. Bless her soul. We found out. Boys, we now we know. The grandma plays the numbers. She's at the fruit stand every day. Buys bananas at the bunch. She looks at the price tags. That's where she gets her hunch. Yeah, yes, we know. We found out. Bless the soul. We found out. And now we know the grandma plays the numbers. What you doing over there? Three, six, nine. Well, what do you know? <laughs> All right. I botched that one. So let's try not to botch this one. Let's stand bush. Uh. You guys want dare or touch? Let's do this one. We'll do touch. <clears throat> I'll rip out your optics. Why throw away your life so recklessly? I should be asking you the same thing. Ah! Ah! <sighs> You got the touch. You got the power. Yeah. Bump, 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 After all is said and done, you never walked, you never won, you're a winner. You got the moves, you know the streets. Break the rules, take the heat. You're nobody's fool. You're at your best when the going gets rough. You've been put to the test, but it's never enough. You got the touch. You got the power. When all hell's breaking loose, you'll be right in the eye of the storm. And you got the heart. You got the motion. You know that when things get too tough, you got the touch. You never bend. You never break. You just know what it is. Takes your fighter in the blood and in the will. It's in the mighty hands of steel when you stand in your ground. And you never get hit when your back's to the wall. Gotta fight to the end and you're taking it all. Ah, you got the touch. You got the power when all hell's breaking loose.
loose. You'll be right in the eye of the storm. And you got the heart to bump, bump, bump. And you got the motion. I don't know if my voice will work, but I got the touch. A fan. You're fighting fire with fire. You know you got the touch. You're at your best when the going gets rough. It's been put to the test, but it's never enough. Oh, you got the touch. A bump, bump, bump. Uh, you got the power. You got the touch. You got the power. Megatron must be stopped, no matter the cost. Well, hopefully I didn't fuck that up too bad. I know my voice is definitely cracked back out. Holy crap, holy crap, you're way above your goal. I know, right? I was trying to go for 666, and here we are. Here we are. Uh, yes, 677. Snake eyes. Well, now Canadian Spider-Man's here. Yes, sleep. Rise, Rodimus Prime. The Matrix of Leadership. Yes, uh, I do need uh, to go ahead and drink a little bit more light. I do have an 11 o'clock number. Oh, damn. Well, thank you. Thank you. Been a minute since I've sleep mantis. Yes, mantis sleep. I really wish I had a mantis to be able to just do that. Because Lord knows I'm still going to be up in the wee hours of the morning. i got to watch True Lies. And by the time True Lies is done so that I have it refreshed for Pop Culture Breakdown, I'm going to have to take a look at this Fallout show and cry. So <laughs> we are far from done from the work tonight. <laughs> It sucks because, you know, I would want to watch True Lies as a palate cleanser, but, uh, I don't, uh, you know, I got to be able to occupy my time somehow while waiting for that to drop. Um, good to see Canadian Spider-Man. I'm not a big horse fan, but it always uh, I welcome the reason to drink. Yes, uh, I will. Uh, oh, it's going to be a, a, a long suffering road. It's going to be a long, lonesome road. See? Do, 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 do. This is the tale of the greatest song in the world. Tribute. <laughs> One day, me and my brother Kyle here, we're both walking down a long and lonesome road. But then... All of a sudden, there shined a shiny demon in the middle of the road. Good night, Rob Wright. And he said, play the best song in the world, but I'll eat your soul. The tale of the courier is the best tale ever told. Um, good night, Rob Wright. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, big guy. Thank you again for being the Virgil to my... Uh, tore through a uh, perdition for, that is uh, Star Trek STD. So I've gotten the jokes written. It's going to be great. Um, but with that, we are wrapping up. And I want to thank everybody who supported the channel tonight. We'll go ahead and run them through. Ensign Rusher, Admiral Teague, Richard Spake, Susan Dolan, then Susan Dolan with another membership, and two from Eugene Bird. Thank you guys so much, so so much. It means an absolute fuck ton. And so now we're gonna go ahead and sing our eleven o'clock number. And then we're gonna run one more ad block. And then we'll go over the show notes again, and then we're gonna call it. And since Canadian Spider-Man is here, 
I feel like the most adequate 11 o'clock number is actually this one. Dale! Dale! Daylight, come and be one, go home. That's cute, Delia. Day! Me say day, 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 oh. Daylight, come and me one, go home. Work all night on a drink of rum. Daylight, come and be one, go home. Stock banana till the morning come. Daylight, come and me one, go home. Come, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Daylight, come and be one, go home. Come, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Daylight, come and me one go home. Lift six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Daylight, come and me one go home. Six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Daylight, come and me one go home. Day, me say day, oh. Daylight, come and me one go home. Day. Me say day, me say day, me say daylight, come and me one go home. A beautiful bunch, all right, banana. Daylight, come and me one go home. Hide the deadly black tarantula. Daylight, come and me one go home. Lift six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Daylight, come and me one go home. Six foot, seven foot, eight foot bunch. Daylight, come and me one go home. Day, me say day, oh. The daylight, come and me one go home. Day, me say day, me say day, me say daylight, come and me one go home. Come, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Daylight, come and me one go home. Come, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Daylight, come and me one go home. day oh day Daylight, come and me one go home. Day, me say 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 day, oh. Daylight, come and me one go home. Eugene Bird with another $4.99 super sticker of a hippo saying, get good. Wait a minute, am I bad? Am I in bad form today? I would certainly hope not, but thank you, sir. I suppose I shall get better. It seems that I do need to give my voice a rest, though. So after these messages, we will have Alistair perform the uh, ending number as well as announce his, the bonus show for reaching above 666 subscribers tonight. So after these messages, we'll be right back. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. I'm Rancor Steve. I'm the host and creator of Man Around, where a bunch of men talk about manly things. And there, we try to help men become better men. And every once in a while, we have to make decisions. And that is, to be better men in life. And I can always assure you that, hey, we all make mistakes, but it's the sensation of being a man. Men being men with men. Do you still have human markings? Is your surface marred with pictures of naked human females, Malibu Sunset, or former human demigods, Elvis Presley, James Dean, Pamela Anderson Lee, or Evil Knievel? Do you have airbrushed slogans on your side, like World Peace or Bust, Centrax Rules, or the bumper sticker, Centrax, bringing you peace, one war at a time? Well, give us a call. We'll take them off for you, give you a whole new look. 
with a machine shop. Detail removers. They'll sandblast you, strip you down to the metal, and build you back up in the approved colors. Machine shop, detail removers. Give us a haul. I would like to remind everyone that this show is brought to you by Pink Wars. It is I, Alistair the Radio Demon, and I have returned in Mr. Stockstead because his voice is currently damaged. <laughs> and he still has so much to do, but thankfully, he doesn't have to do too much because, you see, he will be on Pop Culture Breakdown with Overlord DVD and his entourage of Pop Culture Pundits tomorrow. And then he will be definitely tired after that, so I shall take over and release a Anastar hosted Episode 3 of Radio 616 AM Radio Modulation Broadcasting from Pentagram City at around the 12 o'clock mark Eastern Standard Time whenever Pop Culture Breakdown is done. So... To celebrate, yes, course, we will have another Starks matinee the following day. His voice should hopefully hold out by then. At 7.30 Central and 8.30 Eastern. So he will be broadcasting another full-length show, just like tonight. Might even run it a little later. So he will be very busy in the next night. So with that stated, let us go ahead and do our 12 o'clock number and sign off this broadcast in style, shall we? <clears throat> So let's go ahead and look at our final number for the evening. Looks like we are back down to 676. Wow, I scared two of them away. Who'd have thought? <laughs> Come back, I don't bite hard.
I'm so very hungry. Let's go ahead and uh, move to our uh, closing number for tonight. <clears throat> we'll meet again. I don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Keep smiling through, just like you always do, till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away. So will you please say hello to the folks that I know. Tell them I won't be long. They'll be happy to know that as you saw me go, I was singing this song. We'll meet again. I don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. Oh, we'll meet again. Don't know where, don't know when, but I know we'll meet again. A some sunny day. I promise I won't devour you. Oh, I'll keep smiling through, just like you always do. Till the blue skies drive the dark clouds far away. So will you please say hello to the folks that I know. Tell them I won't be long. They'll be happy to know that as you saw me go, I was singing this song. Oh, we'll meet again. I don't know where, don't know when. But I know we'll meet again. Some sunny day. We'll meet again tomorrow night. With more dad jokes, more ragtime stones, more Tin Pan Alley classics. Because it's 1930 somewhere. Mr. Stark will see you tomorrow night on Pop Culture Breakdown with Urban Lab DVD himself, the future ruler of your planet. And my neighbor. And I will watch the after party tomorrow night for a special 666 a plus <laughs> episode of Radio 616 AM. So we hope to see you there. Now, of course, I do have to be the one that's like FDR at this moment. <clears throat> and to pay homage to what I still consider future broadcasters. Good night, America! And all the ships at sea!